Nice to get you. Hi, good morning all. Ah, how Nancy's. are you? Yeah, fine, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. We ought to have everyone's face on, on online and take a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We met up and uh, we hope not too long before we meet up. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you, Francis? You were in a case? Um, I'm in the study room. Okay. <laughs> it's, it feels like a cage. Look um, like a cage because in the background we can see some grills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Roshan. Hello. How are you? Hello. You're looking great. So it's already 10 a.m. in the morning. Good morning, everybody again. Official good morning. Good morning. I think good morning. we should start this session. Probably all the panelists are there except Mr. Asif. I cannot see him. Hopefully he will be there in a very short time. We should not delay the proceedings because we have to finish it in time. Everybody is busy. So Everyone the, is at home, can't be too busy. <laughs> no, when you are in home, you are supposed to be more busy because your <laughs> family members will keep on pushing you. <laughs> in Star CC is also there. I have taken my time up to 12 p.m. Okay, then they will start <clears throat> to move. Taurit, uh, Eugene is also there, just in case. Sorry? Eugene is also there. Hello, hi everybody. Eugene is hi, good morning. Hello, Eugene. good morning. Good morning. Hi, Eugene. Tell him, Pon, good morning. So we have only 10 Star CC representatives here. Oh. We miss them in Diginar 1, Diginar 2, but in Diginar 3, <laughs> I've got Eugene. Very good morning, Eugene. Yes, good morning, everyone. Yeah. Thanks that you could spare some time to join the seminar. It is my honor, actually. Thank you, thank you. So let's start the proceedings officially. So this is Designer 3. The topic is challenges of COVID-19 and initiatives undertaken by Enrens. Actually, we have changed the Diginar format. If you are used to it, Diginar 1 and Diginar 2, in those cases, it was more like the speakers used to speak and there was less audience than the number of speakers. But in those cases, what we did find is the, the sessions used to be less interactive. So we wanted to make it more interactive and more focused. That's why we have changed the format. The duration has been a little bit reduced. So the contents will be less, but the communication will be more effective. That is our perception. So when Roshan told me that we can arrange a seminar on this topic, then actually it triggered my sense and I jumped into the topic and jumped into the organize, organizing this seminar. And I think this is the most pertinent and most timely seminar. And actually we were little bit of, in a little bit of rush to make it as quickly as possible. That's why we couldn't advocate it too much or promote it too much. Other than the participating countries, six participating countries are there in this project, you all know that. Other than the participating countries, PAN has agreed to speak. I actually sent invitation to all the NREN members, all the Asia Connect members. Only PAN has responded to speak and I forced, I forced literally Francis to speak because- <laughs> No, no, no. My pleasure. He was in a gloomy mind. 
he was very much sad because his traffic has plummeted because all institutions are closed. But I told him that, okay, you express your sadness. Even then we can find some uh, glory in it. Okay. So thank you, Francis, for coming up. And the format, you all know that the format of this designer will be that there are six panelists. They will give their presentation five to 10 minutes or maximum 15 minutes. And after the session will be over, the floor will be open to the audience. So audience will be able to participate and the panelists will, be, will also be able to discuss within themselves involving the audience. So I think it will be much more interactive. And the norm is, you all know the norm. Normally when the speaker speaks, his audio is unmuted and others should be muted to avoid all sort of echoes. Video, it is your choice. You can actually, you can maintain your privacy if you want to switch it off. You can do that, it's your choice, or you can open it up. So the first speaker, let it be myself. So let me start my presentation. I hope you all can see it. Ibrahim, it's yes, visible, sir. right? Yes. It's not yet. We can't see your screen. Let me check. Yeah, now it goes, right? Okay, got it. So this is the topic. Okay, then the impacts. Yes, not at all good. All institutions closed. They are our customer. So obviously traffic, traffic has plummeted almost to 30% of the normal traffic. The left side one is the internet traffic. The right side one is the research traffic. So you can see the drop in traffic, but we don't charge customers on bandwidth. So that's why there is no impact on revenue in our case. Sorry, you seem to have frozen, uh, or is it my screen? I think all others are active. Yeah, I think we're we're all active. I think it's a maybe bandwidth problem. Yeah. Oh, he's disconnected. He's gone. Ibrahim, can you talk with the toilet, sir? Yes. Yes. Uh, please. Maybe internet problem. Okay, you can knock with uh, 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 his cell phone that we cannot uh, hear him. I, I, I already text him. Okay. Uh, it's a load shedding problem in Sars home, so we need to wait some moments uh, for the power back. Okay. So wait a little minute.
I guess most of us are switching off our video so that he get more bandwidth. <laughs> Just in case uh, there's a bandwidth issue. Yes. No, it's power issue. No bandwidth. Ah. He texted me that uh, he will be rejoined within five minutes. Okay. Uh, we can do some socializing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's coming back on. Sorry, interruption of power. Oh. You don't have such experience in your country, like right? Francis? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> very infrequent, such events. Sorry, really sorry. So my screen is visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So how far I was audible then? I think starting yeah, well and this... good. It's audible. No, no. How yes, far? Sir. How far? I could. I, I think you, you yeah. just finished about the traffic slide. thing. So you just okay. come to this slide. Yeah. Okay. So silver lining, what is the silver lining? Government decided to allow online education. It was not there before. Only face-to-face -face education was allowed. And at the same time, institutions started thinking about online meeting. Vice chancellors will do meeting with different head of the departments and different deans of the department faculties Bidrian came up with this video collaboration application services that was made available from Nordunet as a project under Asia Connect, and we offered it free of cost. We didn't charge any money from any of our customer or any of our client, and we offered it to all the institutes, regardless of the institute being our member or not being our member. So actually, it created a big commotion in the community. Those who hardly knew about Bidiran, they could come to know about Bidiran, attracted the attention of minister, deputy minister, and also the financial agencies. They started coming forward. So that was a big blessing. And all on a sudden, Bidiran service became almost indispensable to the community. So that was the biggest achievement actually. So the impact, if we see the impact, you can see that the left side graph is number of meetings, the right side one is number of participants. It used to be up to March, it used to be less than 100 participants, less than 100 meetings per month. It shoot up almost 500 times. It went up to 50,000 meetings in the month of April. And also the number of participants, it went close to a million in the month of April. We also did develop a dashboard because the dashboard that used to be 
provided by Zoom was found to be not working for us because we needed information about the number of universities those are connected, number of meetings, daily meetings, those were happening, and we wanted to make it real time. So we developed some API, we communicated with Zoom in real time, and we could gather their detailed records, and we could develop this dashboard. And in this dashboard, you can see the number of classes, they are available, the day-wise class hours available, the attendees, day-wise attendees, the top 10 universities, those are attending the, those are taking the classes. Also university-wise class hours. The hourly attendees, which is with the hourly attendees and hourly classes, which is, which is very important for traffic engineering, because if you want to purchase your license, this will give you a valid input on which you can dimension your licensing requirement. The total number of classes by number of attendees. And also the institute-wise distribution. How many private universities are involved? How many public universities are involved? So it is mostly dominated, at the moment it is mostly dominated by private universities because you know that their reaction time is sharper than public university. But the public universities are coming up. And once the public universities will come up, that will actually add to our problems because we have limited licenses. So we are thinking about that. So I will discuss that in the question answering session. So let me make my presentation short and quick. So you can see this is collected from the dashboard. The total classes in last 30 days, around 30,000 class hours, around one hour plus per class because it is almost same. And total attendees close to a million, total number of faculties, registered faculties, that means Zoom licenses is 2,100, and altogether 96 universities have joined this venture. So what are the achievements? The installation of local Zoom platform, thanks to Roshan, he has, I had a meeting with him, I think 30 days back, and he advised me to install the local Zoom mirroring platform. So I followed his advice and also the technical person from LARN, the Mr. Senevi, he helped us a lot and we could install it within one day's time because the advice was so effective. And we developed the Zoom dashboard. That is a big development. The financial gain in terms of licensing, Nordunet has agreed to extend the licensing till 31st December. It is absolutely free of cost. So it is a benefit not only for BDN, for all participating countries in this project. Previously, it was up to April 30. And as I have already mentioned, ADB and World Bank has already come forward with a lot of financing. And we have already prepared a DPP of around 4.5 million, which will support online education. And the NREN networking, that's why we are here. All the NRENs, we can gather together, we can disseminate our knowledge. Those who are lagging behind, they can come forward or they can catch up. And those who are leading the venture or leading the initiatives, they can try to help those who are lagging to move forward. That is NREN networking. And that's why Asia Connect is there for. That is my strong belief. 
What are the challenges being faced? The main challenge from the community side is, I mean, the students are facing, that is the last mile network quality, because most of the students, they are joining from remote areas. So that is a big concern for them. The bandwidth cost, although it is low, it is not that high. Almost a quarter of a dollar per hour, but it matters. In this country, it matters for a student. The evaluation system, the impersonification, that is a challenge. The conducting laboratory activities, the courses which involve laboratory activities, how to conduct them, that is also a challenge from the faculty members perspective or the, from the university perspective. And conversion of face-to-face -face lecture tests to online version. Probably many of the faculty members, they don't know. They think that, okay, I have the lecture sheets ready for the on-premises classes. So I will present that in online version also. But there are some best practices that they should be trained. It is not the same. It will look so boring. So they are not the same. So they need to be trained. From Bilirian side, the challenges were the maintaining or achieving the efficiency of Zoom account uses. Because what we have identified from our dashboard that we have only 230 busy hour classes. In the busiest hour, we have 230 classes. So we should be able to maintain our service using 230 Zoom accounts. That is my perception. But we are using at the moment around 2,200 Zoom accounts, so 10% efficiency. So that is a concern. And we don't have federated access services like LARN has. We don't have that. That's why our NOC is maintaining all the accounts. So they are intensely busy. So mitigation of challenges how we are trying to surmount those challenges. The poor last mile network quality, we are suggesting the students we have We are advising the students to go with the recorded version of the lecture rather than following the live lecture if the network quality is poor. And it is working. Actually, I was reading an article today on the newspaper. So in the, the statistics says that 60% student, they want to go with the recorded lecture. Last mile, last mile bandwidth cost. So this is another learning from LARN that they have already made it. We have recommended our education ministry and they are pondering to write a letter to telecom ministry to make it free of charge, the education services through Zoom. And regarding the impersonification during exam and conducting lab, laboratory activities, we are actually asking, we are not specialists in this regard. So we are asking the universities to come forward with innovative way outs for making the examination system so that I can personify a student and I can make the evaluation system authentic. So we are asking proposals from them. And the laboratory activities, we are advising them whether they can make it, they, they can uh, continue with the online versions, online lectures at this moment, and they can perform the laboratory activities later. And also, if there is no solution from the, for the examination issue, they can also take the examination later. So that is also under consideration. Conversion of face-to-face -face lecture to online version, I have already mentioned that this is under consideration and faculty members in many of the universities, they have already started training the faculty members on principles of online pedagogy. Efficiency in Zoom account uses. So we are planning to install a box, box means in an application package facing the 
universities at one leg and the other leg will be connected with zoom so university faculties will have accounts in my application but when they will go for creating a meeting my the meeting will be created from my application and there will be a pool of accounts and from that pool one account will be spent for one particular moment of time we are assuming that using that application once it is prepared we will be able to save lot of licenses i can explain it in later sessions and the unavailability of federated service we are trying to make it as soon as possible hopefully it will be made soon challenges ahead that is speculating the traffic it's a big challenge because if you if we want to buy suppose i have 5000 licenses at the moment so how much should i buy if i need to buy 10000 15000 for how long so that is a big challenge normally traffic increases but once the covid 19 the this care goes down then what will happen to this traffic what will happen to my licenses estimating the price a big challenge because zoom is offering a price nordnet is offering a price which is one third of it but we still don't know how far nordnet price will remain valid zoom support services we are not at all satisfied for critical tickets sometimes they take 40 or 48 hours of time and availability of unlicensed version i don't like the unlicensed version to dominate over licensed version then how come we will make it commercial nobody will buy it for, from bidiran or nobody will use bidiran license so if zoom makes us to buy it then they should allow us to make business also otherwise how the endurance will survive so that is another challenge the road map the online education is going to be the future definitely and bidiran is trying to cope with it building an lms that is also on the card the project has been extended at least i have signed the contract from my end i am waiting for the response of tenster cc but they are agreed in principle that they will extend the project till december 31st and as soon as the project will be extended automatically nordnet licensing expiry period will also be extended and procurement of zoom licensing we are planning it from january 1 2020 and i will request all the participating members to start thinking from now because if we are too late then we will be in deep shit okay so we should we should act in time we have 8 months time starting from now so we should start acting from this time period without wasting a day because there are lot of options i will discuss those options during the questions and answering session and we'll also take your idea about that okay that's all from my end probably i have taken more time than allotted time and the questions if you have any from the audience keep it in your record we will open the floor to the audience after all the presentations will be over okay thank you very much so next presenter i would i would request my good friend mr roshan can you come forward thank you sir uh, you had to unshare your screen great thanks for reminding me yes done hope you all can see my screen you can see your screen okay all right thank you uh, thank you for joining uh, all of you and 
Tauri, thank you for organizing uh, a timely topic. And uh, so what uh, I'm going to uh, do is along the same uh, line of what Tauri was presenting. But given that he has already presented certain material about things like the last mile issues, uh, not exactly last mile, such like the uh, user issues, uh, things like that. I, we also have similar issues. So, uh, and the issues like this power cut, yes, we also have, we do have it. Uh, for instance, I'm connecting my uh, router, the one, uh, the fiber router, like home router to uh, UPS, uninterrupted power supply. So I don't go offline uh, as long as I have battery power in my laptop. So that's, that's how I, You are smarter <laughs> than me. <laughs> that's how I'm managing it. So we have power cuts as well, yes. So uh, let, let me start. So the plan <clears throat> is to, um, I thought of like giving a quick intro on uh, where, what learn is the background and status and then go into the topic. Um, I won't spend a lot of time about learn, uh, assuming our member, our partners know. Um, so we started uh, learn uh, that concept start line uh, and we uh, sort of marked our 30 years uh, last year and uh, we have done a large number of things uh, in between. Uh, I'll not go into detail, but uh, that's like uh, other history. And uh, for the last 10 years, we are running as a company uh, under the University Grant Commission and uh, the universities. So we have basically uh, uh, 15 state universities and then the University Grant Commission. All these 16 um, members are the owners of the company. So in terms of connectivity, we have uh, two sets of connectivities, the main uh, backbone and also backup a set of connectivities uh, through two different circuits, so or two different ISPs. Uh, so uh, basically the idea is we have in fact like in total about uh, 70 plus <coughs> connections in the main one and uh, most of the larger bandwidth uh, connections are also having a backup circuit. So we have uh, uh, our uh, total uh, backbone bandwidth of about uh, 20 gigabits per second. And uh, we are connected to things like the TN network through two uh, links, one from uh, NKN through NKN. The other one is through uh, our own uh, link to Singapore and from there uh, to the TN. And also we are connected to Sing Singaren uh, from there and to internet to and all. So we basically have 77 connections and uh, the largest bandwidth to our members from the member side is 2 GB and the smallest is 20 MB and we have uh, 77 connections. And some of the larger connections, we also have uh, backup connectivity, uh, like I mentioned earlier. So I already mentioned like uh, Sri Lanka is, uh, let me take the pointer. So we are here and we are connected to India and also to Singapore um, uh, through two uh, separate Bungie connections. That's the uh, regional network. So let's, let me go into <clears throat> the topic about um, uh, the today's topic. So that uh, the, I am just following the same guideline given by Taurit. So just to present it in the same order, uh, I'll start uh, with the challenges we faced. Yeah, so uh, uh, similar to what Taurit was presenting, we also had the same issue, uh, managing uh, study from home or the work from home idea for higher education sector. Uh, so that was uh, put on our table uh, when uh, we started, <clears throat> so Sri Lanka uh, encountered the very first case of this virus somewhere in February, January, February, that was like a foreigner. And then the first local case was in March, on March 11th. And uh, uh, two days later, we started seeing a couple of other cases and uh, the government decided to close all the schools. That's like on March 13th, two, just two days after. And uh, the university was also asked uh, by the University Grant Commission uh, to manage it uh, as per the vice chancellor's wishes, and therefore, the, all the vice chancellor decided to close the universities from 30 or 40. So, then onwards, it's, uh, uh, things started accelerating, and uh, uh, within 10 days' time, uh, so like from 13th March to 23rd March, uh, we got, the government was in discussion with the University Grant Commission, and therefore, like we were asked 
to prepare for running you know, online uh, edu- for higher education all the state universities and also some other uh, colleges uh, to run all that online starting from 23rd so we had about in fact like this was decided somewhere on uh, 18th 19th of march so we had like four five days uh, to uh, facilitate whatever is required so we did uh, in that line a number of different aspects uh, uh, so i will uh, discuss those uh, now right so one uh, what we did uh, so we, we we divided the project into two parts one the synchronous teaching uh, where you have one to one interaction for which we uh, th- we should thank uh, taurith and uh, bdren and ordinate for their project so we had the zoom set up already in place and also we had uh, uh, like thousands of mentioning we already had uh, the federated uh, of the Fed- learn federation formed uh, with members joining uh, thanks to our technical team uh, led by uh, engineer hera and uh, so we were able to <coughs> we were on, in fact like even uh, before all this we had the setup for the zoom uh, and federation so the people can join and start meetings and all that were there and uh, so that setup was already there so in addition uh, that is for the synchronous one so for the asynchronous like um, uh, setup uh, we are like i was saying things like uploading videos and downloading and like interaction classes quizzes exams uh, things like that so we had uh, lms in fact like we didn't have a single lms centralized lms setup uh, in learn but we our member institutions uh, we had about uh, 150 different uh, entities who are managing students like different uh, degree programs faculties and so on so we had uh, different lmss in these places we had about 100 different lms instances running um, almost all of them are running from uh, free uh, the moodle software they are installed in uh, decentralized in different servers in all over the con- all over the country so during that 3 4 days uh, the first thing that we what we did was um, uh, the government realized uh, it's it's not going to be working if uh, we the lecturers upload and interact with this lms and then the students have to download videos and watch and all that with uh, the the level of uh, income they have and also uh, the the parity difference so the government decided to discuss with isps the internet service providers of all these uh, uh, students Uh, to see whether we can make uh, the data that is consumed for connecting to this lms servers free of charge and uh, by 23rd the day we started it was achieved so uh, what we did was we prepared a list of all the servers in fact like we meaning learn prepared a list of all the servers in all our member institutions by the way we are uh, maintaining the their ip block so uh, we uh, they are owned by us so we collected a list of IP, um, list of about like uh, 300 to 400 i think about 400 ip addresses of all the lmss and web server websites and things like that we put together and we gave that list to the telecommunication regulation tree commission and uh, they uh, passed the list to uh, the isp so we have six of them so we passed it to them and asked them to white list they agreed by the way with the government so we passed the list to them and they made all these servers uh, Uh, not counted the data packages of any user so that's the first thing we did by 23 so making uh, uh, sure that's happening so in fact like uh, i'm just telling you the sweet part of the story uh, there are issues uh, challenges problems um, some service providers had um, been charged and then like we had to talk to them a lot of different issues anyway so the sweet part of the story is this so um, we got uh, them connected and uh, made it free and so therefore uh, all the lmss were uh, are data free for anybody anybody who is logging in and accessing them so they are behind uh, they are within our the learn network uh, so that was happening and then uh, we started uh, seeing improvements at the same time uh, the uh, universities started asking for the same feature for video conference so but we didn't have anything of that nature for video conferencing because video conferencing we are using zoom solution and uh, zoom is in the cloud and uh, 
the we spoke to the uh, again to the TRC and the ISPs and the internet service providers were not in agreement to make uh, the Zoom cloud access free for obvious reasons. So things like uh, the Zoom usage, as you know, uh, has increased a lot. I used to mention this in all the forums. Uh, after the COVID, uh, Zoom is used for everything, starting from cooking classes to Zumba classes, uh, to teaching, just to chat, all sort of things. So uh, the, the free part of the Zoom mostly, and also all the uh, main um, like uh, uh, companies, private companies, they also use a premium version of Zoom for their things. So making all of that data free uh, access uh, is not possible, like uh, the data not counted towards the packages is not possible from the ISPs. So then uh, I uh, spoke, we like within Learn, uh, uh, with the encouragement and like the challenge taking nature of our engineers, we decided to put Zoom um, uh, servers, like the media servers within the Zoom net, uh, like the Learn network. So we at the beginning started with somewhere like 30 <coughs> virtual machines uh, within our network. In fact, like we uh, had to collect these uh, virtual machines from our members and we put together the setup was done in like two or three days. I can't exactly remember like Taurus was saying and after we doing, I suggested the same to him. Um, so we put together about uh, 30 uh, uh, VMs uh, within the network and then we gave the list of those servers to the ISPs and asked them to just white list only those. Uh, so only the traffic that is connected to the uh, university network. Uh, so that's what we did. And as of now, we are running somewhere like 60 uh, plus uh, 60 uh, VMs uh, catering the video conferencing need within uh, our community. So that's uh, the two projects we did, uh, like two uh, things that we did and uh, things are keep on happening, uh, complaints are coming, issues are happening, but uh, that's how it went. So in terms of uh, the next, so that's like the mitigation step we had taken and what we had done basically. And uh, uh, any visible outcome, unfortunately we don't have like a nice dashboard like what Taurit is having, but uh, I, I'm reporting this to the uh, higher ups uh, weekly. So here is a weekly update of all the, uh, so this one is uh, synchronous activity. So this is the Zoom activity, weekly update of how many uh, meetings uh, that mm -hmm. are happened and also how many uh, participants uh, joined every week. So you can see the numbers. This, we started on the 23rd of March, like I said, and uh, the, this report was like submitted this report like a couple of days ago. This is until the last week. So every week you can see the numbers, how it has, it's mm -hmm. increasing. And uh, if I'm right, uh, like starting from week two or three, maybe it's three, from week three, we are running on premise. So with the on-premise uh, setup and with, uh, uh, so the fourth week, by the way, is uh, mostly a national holiday week. Uh, therefore, the numbers are low. And week five and six, you can see the real impact after the on-premise and people started using it more and more. Uh, so that's uh, how we are, we are in terms of the Zoom usage, uh, weekly summary. And uh, this is uh, the numbers for uh, asynchronous activities. So what we did was, like I said, we had about 100 a uh, little less than 100 uh, LMS instances running across our member institutions. And uh, the administrators are collecting data from their LMSs and updating to a central place and we are reporting this. So this is uh, this data is not very accurate, but uh, so again, you can see from starting from week one, um, uh, that is when we started in March, uh, until now how the number of participants logging into uh, these LMSs every day uh, the numbers are very high compared to the uh, Zoom numbers that is expected for the reasons already explained by Tauri. So that's uh, the number of users, participants, and also the green uh, bars are the number of actions they perform. Things like uh, uh, they uh, ac access a lecture note, they do a quiz, uh, they write a forum post, things like that. Right? So uh, uh, the numbers for all the members within the uh, university network. So by the way, so in terms of the numbers, we have about 125,000 uh, university students uh, in our network and undergraduate students and about um, 50,000 postgraduate students. Uh, but the, the postgraduate thing started a bit later. So these numbers are mostly uh, in the undergraduate and then uh, some postgraduate. So that's uh, uh, how the asynchronous or the 
LMS based distributed uh, activities happen. So that's uh, the visible uh, outcomes we see over time. And uh, the next, any shortcomings? Uh, yes, like um, Tarit was mentioning, we also have similar shortcomings. Uh, uh, one is the infrastructure resource limitation. So in terms of, uh, we, we uh, feel it a lot uh, re related to the Zoom uh, hardware. Uh, now, given that we are running it on premise, uh, we have resource limitations. Say for instance, uh, I'll show you some uh, graphs. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, this is the Zoom usage um, uh, on, a, on a peak day. Uh, so we have uh, collected this data, like um, looked at a peak day and uh, looked at, uh, so Zoom is not, by the way, Zoom is not giving this data, like uh, uh, Tawadit was saying. So they, I mean, they are giving the raw data, but not this sort of uh, graph. So we generated this graph um, manually using some program. And then we saw like uh, the peak hours uh, where we have more than 10,000 simultaneous users at a time is about 10 to 12. So this, we announced this information to the users out on uh, like about two weeks ago. And um, then we thought, okay, so people will uh, re redistribute until things will become okay. And uh, this is what has happened uh, this week. So, um, so the numbers started from <clears throat> um, being peak, meaning like more than 10,000 between 10 and 12 is now um, from eight to four almost. Uh, in, in parallel to uh, doing, telling the users that they had to go and use other times which are less peak or less uh, utilized, uh, we also upgraded our infrastructure by adding a few more uh, virtual machines to the uh, media servers that we are running within the network. So the usage uh, keep on increasing. So when they are using it, just like uh, when our hardware are unable to handle the number of requests or the meeting requests that are coming or the participants, uh, we, always, we are also getting a lot of complaints. Obviously, the Zoom um, uh, connectors will try to will, uh, produce or will show busy messages, and we get a uh, uh, large number of calls, uh, uh, complaints. And therefore, we are telling the user, okay, this is what's happening. This is uh, where we are. And... Uh, uh, use the time that are uh, underutilized. So that's how we are sort of managing the situation. So that's about um, the resource limitation, like particularly the Zoom hardware that we are running. And uh, remote areas and uh, dark spots is another one, like uh, Taurus was mentioning, we have, uh, so I have just taken uh, one mobile operator's um, graph from uh, the coverage graph from uh, their uh, website. So this one, uh, this, they are quite popular and have a larger coverage. Uh, so the issue here is uh, in multiple folds. So uh, there are not every home has uh, a fiber, obviously not fiber on even broadband. And a lot of students are using mobile-based network, uh, data network. So uh, this coverage is, so as of now, most of the devices they have, the students have in my understanding is uh, 3G, not third uh, generation technology, not 4G. And uh, the mobile operators are no longer supporting uh, or no longer upgrade, like uh, expanding their 3G network. So they are going into 4G and they want to expand 4G. And they, so there is a mismatch there. And uh, the 3G network coverage is staying as it is. It's not improving. At the same time, the 4G network they are developing. The devices uh, rate, uh, conversion rate from 3G to 4G from the user point of view is also a problem. And so we are looking at these issues and seeing how uh, the university grant commission from with some grants, whether we can enable the users, meaning the students uh, have access to uh, better technology and enable devices. So that's something else uh, we are aware of and uh, trying to solve, uh, I mean, uh, advising the uh, authorities to solve. Right, so that's about the, uh, uh, the dark spots and the lack of proper devices, like I said. So we are working on the limitations, resource limitation through what I said, and uh, the uh, devices, how the way I explained, and uh, remote spots, we are unable to do anything except uh, we, uh, we wait until the technology uh, catch up and uh, use uh, the devices become better. So that's basically what uh, I have. And thank you for listening. And uh, like Tauri said, maybe we have the maybe Q and A at the end. Thank you, Roshan, for your nice presentation. Thank you. And also, you have worked hard. If you don't have the dashboard, you had to collect all those data. 
<laughs> That's a hard job. Okay, I have some question, but I'm not going to waste time now because there are different sessions for questions. So can I request Dr. Bhushan to come forward and make your presentation? Are you ready, Dr. Bhushan? Yeah. Okay, long hair. Don't go to the <laughs> right? <laughs> Scared like me. Yes. But I don't okay. have hair. That's why, that's why you <laughs> won't feel it. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, this initiation to Tarif and uh, nice presentation and also to Rosen. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, I'm going to present uh, a uh, little more, I mean, um, a whole, how, how it, it impacts in whole uh, NRN system. Uh, so it is a little more than, the, uh, I, I'm a little different, it may be a little different than the, your presentation. So um, the challenge is, uh, so the COVID started from uh, December 19, yeah, from China and uh, in our case, we have locked down from 20, 24th March, March 24th. So the, the challenge that we face is uh, uh, the, uh, the cancellation of upon M49 that everyone knows. And then other thing, uh, continuation of lobbying activities of NREN with UGC. Actually, we're, we're lobbying extensively um, from last year for, um, you know, for establishing NREN and uh, connecting with all the education sector, so so uh, especially with the UGC and uni universities, World Bank, so all those continuation of lobbying activities uh, we are stop, and also the collaborative activities with other uh, all other partners like BDRN and Singer and all um, all other partners, and then another project that we have, we were disturbed is the uh, expanding of ten connection in seven provinces of Nepal, uh, that is a connect project. Uh, then after that, uh, after uh, after this uh, um, uh, incident, that we have a um, lot of demand from uh, for Zoom actually. Um, so. So we have a lack of human resources in providing support for highly demanded online meeting. Um, that is the uh, challenge we are facing. And um, another challenge that we, we, are, we are providing the support for online and also the Zoom and all those things. But the students in the uh, remote area, area space, especially outside Kathmandu and uh, other uh, large cities, uh, they have poor internet connectivity and uh, 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 internet access, and also the it's very expensive. So uh, students are uh, facing a lot of problems in connecting uh, Zoom. So these are the challenges, and the mitigation that we are uh, taking is um, like we are providing necessary support online. So so whatever support uh, people need for Zoom or for other video conferencing facilities. We are providing online and and also we are mobilizing volunteers. So uh, beside our staffs, we have very few staff. So we are also mobilizing volunteers from outside students, especially. And and then we are also partnering with other uh, like-minded and interested organizations for synergy effect to fight against COVID-19. So we are also working beside this online and Zoom facilities. We are also working other in other issues also uh, to, uh, to fight against COVID. So we are partnering, partnering with different um, institutions. So visible outcomes. <clears throat> so, um, so on-demand support is uh, in conducting video conference and webinar services. So this is also the visible outcomes uh, because as, uh, as Tarif said, um, many, uh, many people, many organizations in Nepal, they are, they, they are knowing us. Uh, and the and, and it is becoming becoming very popular because of this video conferencing facilities and webinar services. So we are also supporting them. Um, besides giving the license itself, <clears throat> we are also uh, supporting. They request for the conference. They request for the webinar services, and 
we support them so uh, that is the one way of uh, doing that and the poor uh, visible outcome and another thing is uh, providing zoom li license itself yeah, to end end member and, and other in institutions especially educational institutions and uh, one another thing we are doing now is development of uh, and deployment of Nepal COVID-19 surveillance system. So we have developed our own surveillance system to support government and local bodies to, fly, uh, to fight against COVID-19. So that, that is one another um, visibility now we are having here. Um, so, so there are some pictures. Uh, the mayor, mayor of Kathmandu, he launches our um, surveillance system. Uh, so now this is also one of very good visible uh, visibility for us to promote end rent. <clears throat> uh, so in, uh, for Zoom, uh, now we have uh, 263 users. Um, we have already distributed license to these people, uh, these institutions actually. And, uh, but there is high demand, like we have a new request for 600 plus, but we are still uh, controlling um, because a uh, lot of private organizations are also demanding, so we are not sure whether to give them or not because uh, because of the private. Um, now we are we are providing support to community colleges and universities and hospitals. Oh, so the, these are the uh, major uh, our major um, institutions like Truman University. This is the largest university in Nepal, and Kathmandu University is the second largest. Our Western universities, <clears throat> so um, NAST and research institutions. So uh, to them, we are providing all these licenses. <clears throat> so this is the lockdown, uh, March 24 lockdown period time. So uh, you can see the how it is growing <clears throat> till this May 5 and 6. So uh, we have all together total meetings, 4,000 um, plus meetings is ha uh, happened already. And this is a top, um, top university, this Kathmandu University uh, School of Medical College. They are the highest user um, of the meetings. And <clears throat> meeting hours, um, so duration of hours. So altogether, um, I forgot to put the number here. But, but the train is going like this. So, um, but uh, as, <clears throat> as a tariff, um, um, presented the, the dashboard. We don't have dashboard yet, but uh, we are uh, on the way of developing our own dashboard. So meeting participants, we have, again, I forgot to put the number here. So these are the participants, students, researchers, local government. We are also um, um, providing this support to local government. So municipalities and uh, province government, they are also using our system. So we are providing support to online service support to them as well. And all, even the federal and provincial government, federal and provincial parliamentarians, uh, institutions and people uh, fighting against the COVID-19. So, so they, all these are the participants. Um, you can see the in week six, we have 100,000 plus participants using it. And we, uh, so we also have 52 webinars. Um, participants, 11,000 plus participants. Some of the titles that we have, I have uh, put some of the titles that we did. And another thing that we are doing now is the uh, uh, surveillance system as well, itself. So we have developed a surveillance system. I'll show you some of the results that uh, we are having with this system. So this is the self-assessment of uh, possible infection of corona, uh, coronavirus. And um, keep a person in surveillance. So if someone gets symptom of the, I mean, corona, then he, he or she will be uh, contacted by our doctor and our doctor will um, consult them how, what to do and what not to do and whether they have to go to taste and all those things. And uh, so, so th this is the surveillance system we are uh, deploying now and uh, 34 municipalities within Kathmandu Valley and Cabre Valley is using this system. This is full flesh system. They are using uh, these 34 municipalities are using full flesh system. So they will get the whole service from uh, doctor, uh, doctor to the testing part. 
testing uh, and i mean for testing also so so this uh, this system is uh, working very well in this 34 municipalities. Besides this 34 municipalities, this system is, has also been using by other part of the world. I'll show you some of the uh, maps and some of the data. So this is some, so so we have uh, we have face, uh, Facebook and uh, we also use a lot of media. So uh, so this surveillance system because of the surveillance system and the online services we are providing uh, many people now start knowing the uh, internet. So many, many people didn't know it in now. Uh, I'll, I'll show you uh, this uh, website in a while. So some of the recommendations that we have is extension of, extension of Zoom license. So what we do after third, uh, this December 20. I think uh, we must have to do something uh, for getting this uh, Zoom license. Uh, either we have to pay or we can get uh, extended from the uh, from Asia Connect or I don't know we have to work on this and and promotion of learning management system like uh, like uh, Rosen presented um, information about learning a lot of information about learning management system in Sri Lanka but in Nepal it's not yet popular some only few institutions they are using a learning management system but the, we must have to promote this learning management system and also the infrastructure for distance learning facilities and uh, since these uh, universities and other institutions, educational institutions, they they started uh, understanding why this is required, why LMS is required, why uh, this distance learning facilities is required. Uh, so I think this is the right time for us to promote. Uh, so we have to work on this also, and and we have to continue lobbying um, after COVID. Uh, even after COVID, we have to continue lobbying on, the, on this kind of, I mean, uh, system. Otherwise people start forgetting it again. So um, then another thing is explore technology for optimization of using Zoom. So uh, like, like we have, we have, uh, we have only 1000 license now, yeah? So we are trying to control and we are also you know, requesting people not to, I mean, they use this, the Zoom efficiently, what they have. So we are also controlling in the license. And uh, so we still need to explore. I think um, the one uh, work that uh, Tarif is doing is, uh, I think is very good. And uh, I, I think we have to promote that uh, methodology and technology also here in Nepal. And in the network extension and policy to use of internet Wi-Fi. And we, have, uh, we still have problem using internet with our, I mean, integrating with our research and education network in Nepal. So we have to, uh, look and we have to work on the policy. How can we do that in Nepal as well? And take COVID-19 pandemic as an opportunity for promoting and collaboration for it. So we, we have to take this as an opportunity, the, the COVID that uh, happening now. So I think this is the very right time for NN to promote uh, ourselves. So and uh, what, whatever we can do, for promoting NREN and for supporting, I mean, government or local government here in, in the country. I think we have to do that extensively. So uh, I'll give you some, uh, just a minute, okay. So we have our one uh, dedicated web uh, page for this Nepal COVID-19 uh, surveillance system. So I have some information you can download from here, our system, and you can even use in Bangladesh or in Sri Lanka. But Bangla in Bangladesh, uh, I have seen Bangladesh, in Bangladesh, the system has been used. Also in Sri Lanka, some people have used it. Uh, in Singapore, nobody has used it. Hopefully, Francis will use it. And uh, so these these are the dashboard that we are we have in our uh, website. Um, so this information uh, uh, we we get update this information in our page. John, we can't see the uh, dashboard. We uh, we can only see your. Um, oh, 
Yeah. Okay, just a minute, I'll see it again, okay? Sorry. Can you see it now? Hello? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yes, visible. Okay. So this is, uh, this is our page dedicated for uh, the COVID-19 surveillance system. So you can download our system from here. You can use in your country as well. And these are the status, COVID-19 status uh, in our country now. So this is, uh, we have 99 total confirmed and um, zero total, uh, zero death till now. And these are the information we update every day. So this is the district that, that is uh, get infected. So things like that, we, uh, we keep on updating every day. So, so these are some of the visualization thing. And uh, our system has already been used by uh, 7,000 plus, probably um, 8,000 plus now, I think. And people in surveillance, so are in our system, in the surveillance, we have 500 plus people are in surveillance. So they are uh, always, uh, they, I mean, they keep on update through our doctors. Mm. And 34 municipalities are in uh, our surveillance system. So this is these these are the municipality who can get all full fledged our uh, full fledged uh, feature from uh, our system. But other people that like seven seven thousand plus people, they are all over the world. They can use uh, to I mean for self assessment. Uh, some other things. So a few, a few other information that we, we have. So, so the, uh, this is the way that we are doing for surveillance system. And uh, I think uh, because all these, uh, all these activities now people, um, um, are they are knowing now yeah, and and what NN is doing and what they can what support they can get from NN things like that so this this is this, this is all about our you know, status of NN in Nepal so if there's anything I can answer you oh, that's great I have found something innovative from your part who has developed this software our, our one, our, uh, I mean, we are work, uh, We are seven organizations working together. Yeah, so 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 um, actually, uh, we have um, different kind of organizations like software development companies there, and also the medical hospitals are there, and and in itself is there. So so seven different uh, type of organizations working in different sector actually working together and come up with the software. And this is, uh, I mean, uh, we have very nice uh, um, backend part, a lot of dashboards and many JS things are also there, JS based, uh, it's a JS based information system, so very strong system. Well, that's a great initiative. So it Thank was you. Enrance initiative or the partnering organization, they came up to you and they offered yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, we are partner organizations, like uh, we are working together from a long time, uh, all these institutions, and uh, now uh, NN is lead, leading. So NN this. is the leading organization. Yeah, yeah, leading organization is NN. That's great, nice yeah. concept. Yeah, yeah. So totally out of the box. Okay, that's Thank great. You. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. So Thank we you. have found something innovative, other than doing video conferencing, doing telemedicine. So this is something innovative, which the entrance can go ahead with 
some other organization definitely you need the support because mm. you alone cannot do it and then no, alone no, very difficult no. to do it you need yeah, one thing i what are i one thing i forgot to tell that uh, all these municipalities uh, you know, where we are supporting for, for the surveillance system all those uh, municipalities are also using our platform i mean zoom platform so so they have uh, when there is something to i mean um, mm, to have meeting or something to do even to the i mean to the local level uh, like war level war level and community level people they use our zoom for doing all this uh, okay that's great so it is like something barter agreement so you are giving something you are taking something okay. okay thank you thank you for your presentation so next presenter will be mr asif how are you um hi hi there um, hello everybody Uh, good to see some familiar faces. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. My big thanks to you that you have come forward to join us. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to have happy to be involved. Um, so I'm just going to share my presentation. Uh, I think most of us are going to talk about very similar issues, so I'm not going to spend too much time. Um, is guys because I think we're all going through uh, similar challenges. Uh, can you all see my screen okay? Yes, that's fine. All right. So I'm just going to start off with giving you guys a little bit of background um about you know how this has hit uh Pakistan in particular and and the um uh you know the the approach that we that the government has taken and the higher education commission has taken and just wanted to remind everyone that the higher um uh, the PERN Pakistan Education Research Network falls under the higher education uh, commission we're not a, a separate entity per se we're really under the higher education commission um so so a lot of what we do is is very tightly integrated um uh, with what the hec does um so on 13th march uh the government announces that all schools will be closed um until the 4th of april um that that was the initial announcement that came out um now it it caused a bit of confusion because while they said that the schools would be closed it wasn't very clear as to whether online learning could continue so we we issued the hcc issued um guidance to universities in saying that on on the 16th of march is that if you are um capable of um uh, providing online distance learning you you guys should go ahead and continue um other universities that that aren't quite there yet you should spend the next couple of weeks um trying to get yourself up and running because we don't know how long this is going to last uh you know we we even though universities are physically closed we want to encourage um uh universities to actually start uh, distance learning virtual vir- virtual instruction as we call it um so 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 what happened afterwards is that we started getting a lot of questions um you know and the uh, issue in Pakistan is that uh, we have about 200 universities um all of them have the varying capability of what i would call the digital maturity and um we started getting very simple questions okay what video conferencing solution can i use uh we started getting questions around uh you know what's an lms what lmss are out there so so we issued um some guidelines uh, on the 26th of march uh, it's a very short paper uh where where we really went into okay what are your options as far as um your uh video conferencing uh cap- uh, uh functionality that you're going to need and and uh, these are the different lmss out there this is the sort of uh issues that you should be uh, thinking about so on the 27th of march uh, then again the uh, government said schools are going to remain closed even further and now uh we had to issue another directive letting people know that because uh, the way the government issued the directive they said that it would be a summer vacation or an early summer break um so we had to issue another directive saying that look we we want people to continue with online learning um but if you you know if you're if you're not capable use the next two months to 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 uh to get to procure the software you need do all the installations procure whatever licenses you need um just 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 stepping back to the guidelines when we issued the guidelines uh we um looked at it from a very different perspective we we looked at it in terms of what what do we have today uh, i think everyone is as uh, before me has been talking about zoom 
Unfortunately, we did not have those Zoom licenses at those same prices. Uh, when we had reached out to Zoom, um, the, the educational pricing is still very, very expensive. Um, so the, the only option that we had was, uh, was Microsoft Teams. Um, so um, the, the, the interesting thing about Microsoft Teams is that uh, in, in Pakistan, if you're a PERN member, you're eligible to get um, uh, A3 plus uh, Office 365 plus licensing for, for your student and, your, and for all students and for, and for faculty as well. And Teams was already included um, in, 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 that, in that package. Um, so, so, we, so our guidance as far as the video conferencing solution was concerned is, look, your you know, universities are welcome to go out and procure their own. But as far as uh, you know, Pern is concerned, as far as the HEC is concerned, we're recommending that you use Teams. You already have the licenses for it. It's not great, it's not perfect, but at least it gets you up and running fairly quickly. Um, on, the, on the LMS front, uh, we had said that you're welcome to use your own, uh, but, and, I, and I'll, um, I'll talk about that in, in my next slide, but we had recommended that, uh, that they go with Moodle. Now, um, between the 16th of March and say the, the 30th of March, uh, we started receiving a lot of complaints from students on uh, a, you know, a lot of different things that we hadn't even thought about, um, you know, connectivity issues. Uh, we, we were getting reports about um, just the quality of instruction. I, 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 th I think this was, this was the key thing that, that the, uh, the feedback that we got, that um, the quality of in instruction wasn't quite to the standard that the students were expecting. Um, so, we, so we put the universities at, on, on notice. We said, look, you have to uh, make sure that uh, whatever content you're putting out there, whatever, however way you're conducting your online classes, it needs to be at, at a certain level. Because while we've, you know, as I, I think someone else had mentioned this before, is that in our, we don't have a, a, a distance learning policy. Uh, we do have a distance learning policy, but there's only two universities that are allowed to do that. Uh, but we had extended that to all the other universities during this time. And, and, and we said to them, look, if the quality isn't there, we'll, 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 we'll have to uh, stop this. Um, then on, on the 15th of April, uh, we, we also issued guidelines around, you know, what does online readiness mean? So, so our role as the HEC and, 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 and in some ways PERN as well, is to educate the university, let them know what they need, what is the minimum requirements. Um, there, there, there's a whole quality aspect of it, but, that, but that's, I'm not talking about that right now. Uh, we'd also issue some quality guidelines. And, and then we gave them a, a deadline to, to make sure that they have an LMS. So what were the challenges? Um, so I, I think the main challenge for an NREN is most of our design assumes that everyone is on prem. Right, um, everyone's connected to our network, uh, so all every feature, every service that we provide is based off of the premise that everyone is connected. But the reality is, during this crisis, people are connecting from home, and and what that means is, I, I think everyone's talked about um, this this before. It's really the digital divide, right? It's limited bandwidth, uh, limited co coverage, affordability, lack of devices, power disruptions, as we saw earlier. Um, you know, I'm, I wasn't as smart as Roshan, but, but the ISP provider that I have here um, automatically installs a UPS with your router. So, so, I, so typically when the power does go out, I, I don't lose connectivity. Um, but, you know, these are real, real issues. And, and, and in, a, in a country like Pakistan, where um, there's about, uh, you know, you can take a look at the uh, internet and, and broadband penetration, uh, it's you know, it's on paper, it's very, very high, right? I, 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 I think we look at about some of 70% in terms of people have um, so, some, some form of access. Uh, but but, but, the, but the reality is when these kids, especially the ones that were studying in universities, are going back to their villages, um, you know, they, they don't have that, that, those, those sort of connectivity. Um, uh, they don't have the same sort of connectivity that, that they do in the urban centers and or they do in their universities. Um, as I mentioned before, 50% of our universities, we have, a, we have 200 to 50% is 100 universities, don't have LMSs in place. Um, you know, 70% of them did not even have uh, uh, VC solutions, uh, video conferencing solutions. Um, you know, there, there are, everyone did try to use some sort of free version of Zoom. 
people who are using um, uh, uh, Google Meet um, to, to, some, to some extent, the, the ones that had the G Suite licenses. But, but a majority of um, our, our universities, even though they had the Microsoft licenses, weren't even aware of Microsoft Teams. So, so we, we, we had to do a huge push there. Um, and, you know, and I mentioned this before that the faculty talked about this doesn't really have um, uh, any experience with, 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 with virtual instruction. So, um, you know, that, that's something that we, you know, definitely did not, we didn't, we didn't anticipate this. Uh, well, we did, but we didn't think it, it was going to be, uh, you know, as, as uh, bad as it turned out to be. But, but it, you know, but the bottom line is we weren't ready for this, right? We, we were not really, we were sort of caught off guard. Uh, we had made a lot of assumptions um, and, you know, it, it was, we really had to take a step back as an NREN and um, really think about the services that we're offering. Because most of what, what, what most NRENs do is uh, we, we offer connectivity services, right? And, and on top of that, um, as far as Pern is concerned, you know, we have bulk licensing arrangements as well. Uh, Microsoft being being one of them, uh, the access to the digital library being being, being another, um, and 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 the and, and the list goes on. But but, it, but again, it, it, the design is all uh, based off of the fact that everyone's on prem, everyone's in the university, um, not uh, for remote access. So okay, well, so what are we doing? Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we're doing um, we we develop policies and guidelines for online learning and readiness. Uh, we've uh, started the um, you know, uh, rollout of Microsoft Teams. Uh, the Microsoft uh, country management here has been fantastic. Uh, we've gotten great support from them. Um, you know, again, this is all, most of this stuff that they're doing for us right now is all free of cost. So, so I, so I do want to thank my, you know, Microsoft partners, and I'm, I'm and I, I would, I would suggest that the NRENs reach out to their Microsoft partners as well, um, because they are really, really willing to help. Um, we started exploring the um, central Zoom licenses. I've, I've had um, conversations with um, Rashan about this earlier as well. Um, we, we, are, we are getting close um, to, uh, to an agreement, uh, but we're, we're still waiting on the licensing terms and we're still figuring everything out. But, but, but I am hopeful that we will get some sort of discount licenses available. Um, and then once, once we've got that, I think uh, for, for the... You know, we, we, we were not fortunate enough to be um, part of the same TN project. So uh, I, I just, you know, wish we were, so we wouldn't have this issue, but, um, but, but at this point we cannot, we are not offering Zoom, uh, but we are looking at uh, the Zoom licenses. Uh, what we did do is we, we, we discovered that a lot of universities, um, you know, the, the ones that don't have LMSs typically are the ones who, who don't have the internal capacity. They don't have their own data centers. They don't have, um, enough bandwidth either to, to be able to support um, uh, their own LMS. So we started offering Moodle, um, a hosted Moodle platform to the universities. Um, the uh, fourth thing that we're doing, or the fifth thing that we're doing as far as this list is concerned, is, is that we're, we're working on something called a Talim bundle. Which Talim means education in Urdu. Um, we're, we're working with our mobile operators. One thing I did want to point out and, and it's going to be a question for, for Roshan later as well, is that, um, you know, getting the ISPs to give free data, white, white-listed data was, um, was, was, was easy for us. Uh, we, we, we did uh, run into a lot of issues with, um, with, with the mobile operators. Um, and uh, so we, we've been working with them to, to develop a, a, a specific data bundle for students. And... Um, we're, we're, you know, still negotiating pricing. They've, they've come back with, 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 with certain pricing and uh, we're, um, we, we should be announcing that very, very soon. But um, and I, I think it's similar for everybody. A lot of the in internet and broadband coverage in Pakistan is all mobile based. Um, I, I, for a population of you know, over 200 million, we only have 2 million fixed line subscribers. Um, and that means everyone else is, uh, is using mobile broadband data. So this, this is huge for us. Um, what, what we're also doing is we realize that we don't have enough data in terms of you know, what the students need, um, you know, whether or not they have connectivity, whether or not they have devices, uh, where they are. Um, you know, the, so, so we started collecting um, just a lot of data around students. 
and, and uh, get, get, you know, really trying to engage with them and get their feedback. Um, we're, we're working with the government on the reduction of uh, taxes on mobile data. Uh, I don't know how it is in other countries, but in Pakistan, uh, it's about 27.5% is what you pay for um, taxes on your mobile data. Uh, we're working with the government to, to get that uh, at least removed, um, at least for the, for the next few months. Um, we, we're also looking at, you know, uh, I think there was a slide earlier that, that talked about um, our, our own bandwidth uh, consumption has gone down. Um, the you know the PERN bandwidth, so we're working with our bandwidth providers to try, try to get discounts from them uh, or our, our, our agreements um, from that perspective. Um, and uh, we are working on, as I think as most of you know, uh, both Coursera and edX have offered free courses until uh, for, uh, until at least over the summer. I think in Coursera's case, it's till September. Um, so when Chris, Coursera originally announced this, we let the universities do it on their own, but we didn't really see a lot of uptake from universities. So with, with edX now, we, we've worked out a, a central agreement um, uh, on, on, on behalf of all the universities in Pakistan, and we're sort of facilitating that as well. Um, so what have we done so far? Uh, we've, uh, wrote, we've deployed a shared high availability, you know, um, we've, uh, these Moodle instances. Um, we've deployed a shared big blue button instance, and, and this is something that I think we can maybe talk about later. Big blue button is an, is an open source alternative to Zoom. Uh, the performance isn't quite there. It's, it's not, uh, you know, as it's, it's, it's nowhere close uh, to, to being as good as Zoom, but I think the, the whole point is, is that it's actually good enough, and, and, and if we're not going to be paying any licensing fees, um, you know, we, we are exploring that, and I would encourage other NRENs to explore it too. So, so far we've got about 20 universities that have migrated over to Moodle. Uh, we've started training our internal staff on, on giving support, because I think part of what we need to do is give that support. Um, there, there's an online training um, they're, 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 uh, course happening at learn.moodle.org. If you don't know about that, I would suggest that um, you, know, you guys take a look at it as well. Uh, MS Teams roll out, uh, you know, again, we were paying for this, but um, it wasn't being used by universities, so we've, we've deployed about 50, over 50 universities there. And, and then we've also started collecting data on the online readiness of universities themselves. All right, smooth sailing? No. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wish I could say we, 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 we've gotten it all right. Um, you know, on, on, on the right side of the screen, you'll, you'll see some Twitter uh, trends, um, you know, huge Twitter trends going on in Pakistan at one point. You know, students wanted us to suspend online learning. Um, they, they, they wanted their summer break. Um, you know, what started recently now is fee reduction. And I'm sure that your, your, your students are going to be coming back to the, to the universities as well and saying, look, we're not, you know, this is, this is not what we paid for. You know, give us our money back. Um, so, you know, some of these issues have already been highlighted, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. Uh, but the asynchronous versus synchronous one it was, well, was, was a huge one. You know, we'd gotten that wrong because our, our initial instructions were, you know, we because we know asynchronous takes a lot more time to develop. We said, go ahead with the synchronous model. Uh, just get a, got to get up in front of a class and, and give a lecture. Unfortunately, as we all know, that that's just not how it works. Um, and uh, and and we're we're working on resolving that. Um, some of the other things that we didn't really talk about is that we we as in uh, Fern, we don't have an online help desk. We don't have, really have a call center for the new services that we've developed. Yes, we, 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 we have a knock, but, but here when, you, when, you, when you're talking about integrating real applications and providing support for that, we're not, um, um, so we're not, we're not really set up to, to, to do that. Uh, we, we haven't solved the, the issue of online testing, you know, proctoring sort of solution, you know, what is gonna happen with, with the exams uh, we're, we're, we're still looking into that. Um, we don't have a, a CRM tool, um, so it's very difficult to keep track of, you know, if we're, if, if a um, university is uh, using Teams, not using Teams, uh, you know, what exactly are they using, just collecting data about, you know, what, what their um, technology choices are and how that integrates with us, um, you know, whether or not they've, they've, um, they've uh, got an LMS, if they're using our Moodle, you know, what are the issues that they're seeing? How, how do we respond uh, very, very quickly? And, and uh, I, think, I think one of the other uh, two, two main things that have, I don't think have been discussed right now is that, uh, or, 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 or up till now, is um, the skill set of existing staff. 
you know, where NANRENs are usually uh, networking shops, um, the, the services that, that at least we're, we're trying to provide is more at the application software layer. Um, and um, I, I don't know about the other NRENs, but you know, we don't have the staff um, to do that. We don't have that skill set available. Um, uh, the, the other thing that we found out is a lot of universities don't even have VPN set up. So when they've got um, their, their own internal um, uh, resources, uh, students cannot access them. So some suggestions um, that, that, that I think we as NRENs can, can start looking at and uh, um, start, start providing to our communities. Uh, one is uh, just, just training on cybersecurity. I, I think universities need, need a lot more of that, the ones that are deploying their own systems. Uh, they, they need to really understand cybersecurity because you know, once we start collecting all this data, uh, you know, once, uh, you know, there, there's universities out there that have, that, you know, have an LMS and they're not even using um, to, you know, a secure protocol like HTTPS, basic things, but, but we need to make sure that the universities understand that. I think that's, that's an opportunity for us. Um, you know, on, on the on the on the capacity building side, um, data protection policies. A lot of universities don't have any. We've uh, we are in the process of issuing one, um, sort of a, a template model for universities to adopt. Uh, training for faculty. Uh, I, I think we can we can start providing that. We wouldn't be the ones giving it, but at least we we can uh, we, you know, we we can be the entity or the organization that um, ends up um, providing some of these services. Uh, the other thing that I, I would say is tap into um, a lot of countries have uh, universal services funds. Um, so one of one of my suggestions would be please try tra tapping into those funds. Um, uh, 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 quite a few countries, uh, Pakistan included, um, the USF um, does have have quite a bit of funding, and and um, you know if if, it, if this falls under their mandate, um, which it which it does in in in, uh, in, in quite a few countries. Um, you know, they, they, they can help with funding as well. Um, you know, we've been moving more towards open source tools. Um, so I think creating more awareness with universities around what open source tools are. Um, not just awareness around the tools, but the, um, you know, you, 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 open source, while it's free, it does come at a cost. And there's no support available. Um, you always have to pay for support to make sure that they understand that. Um, but, it, but I think more importantly, if, if we can get a communi internal community together, uh, you know, we we can uh, add a um, you know a, you know just provide some of that internally. Um, I, I think the other main suggestion is you know moving to the blended learning flipped classroom model. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure that most people here know what that's about, so I won't won't describe that. Um, and then um, on the opportunities, I think this is a great opportunity to build your partnership with universities. Uh, show to them that you're not just a, a bandwidth provider or a connectivity provider. Um, look at moving to uh, EDU gain uh, to access central resources. Uh, a, a great example is our digital library. Um, you know, it's the access to that is restricted by the IP address that you're coming from. Um, so depending on the subscription of the university, you know, if uh, we, it, that, you know, based off of the IP address, it determines uh, what uh, libraries that you have access to based off of what your university subscribed to. Um, and that, that, that model hasn't really worked. Um, for us, because as I mentioned before, we don't have, uh, um, the universities don't have VPNs. These students are sitting at home. They, they, they can't access um, the, 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 the libraries that the universities are already paying for, the digital library aspect of it. Um, VPNs, I mentioned this before, but we should look into uh, deploying, um, you know, central VPNs on our network. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure we can figure this out. Um, you know, leveraging our own infrastructure, I think a lot of, um, uh, NRENs are already doing that. Learn is a great example of how they're offering on-prem um, on their own, um, uh, on-prem Zoom using their own infrastructure. It's not just about the hardware, it's also about the bandwidth, right? We've got both, um, so, 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 let's, uh, so let's leverage that. Um, and then we really need to be looking at building up um, our internal capability uh, outside of the you know, networking space. You know, we, you know I, would, I would recommend um, I would suggest that you know we, we, we start looking at hiring some real DevOps engineers who can help with uh, open source deployments, um, developers as well. You know, everything that we're deploying does end up um, requiring some sort of tweak, tweaking. Um, this is also an opportunity to build community um, through some through through discussion boards and mailing lists. Um, you know we we don't have those services internally. Uh, I think that 
you know, it's something that we're looking into building. So any advice from the other end or ends there, I think, would be would be useful. And then, and then finally, this is a great time to ask for more funding um, from uh, from the government. I think this is it just highlights um, the, the the importance of technology. We don't know whether or not this is going to stay um, at uh, you know if, 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 this, if this is going to be staying for you know is this a three month thing that we're talking about? Is it six months lockdown that we're looking at? You know, there's people talking about this coming back almost every year, right? So we have to be prepared. Um, and, and this is a great time to, to go and ask for um, funding. Uh, you know, there's, uh, do, do engage with your um, donor agencies. Uh, do engage with, you know, partners like ADP and the World Bank that some of you guys are already doing. We're, we're doing the same thing. Um, I, I think with that, I think I've taken quite a bit of time, so I'm just going to end. And uh, we can always come back to questions um, when we're all done. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Mr. Asif, you have put forward a lot of questions for the entrance to answer. Okay. And the situation is Bangladesh, Pakistan, I think India is almost similar. Here also students are demonstrating. Some are legitimate, but some probably it is my view that they are showing some excuse or bringing some excuse to take it as a vacation rather than continue with online education. And that is working as a boomerang for us. Okay, that is actually backfiring. They are saying that the, okay, the quality is not good. Maybe the quality is good. Maybe there are some interruptions, but even we are, uh, we are arranging a student survey. We are arranging faculty survey also, but we don't know whether we will get candid comments from the community. If the community is not candid, if they don't become transparent, then it is very difficult to make your policy or to make your decisions on the basis of that. Okay, I have a few more questions. Probably I will ask you during the question answering session. Let's continue with the presentation. Thank you very much. So next presenter will be Mr. Francis from Singaran. Okay. Thanks. Um, let me get my screen. Thank you, Francis, for being, yeah. for giving your consent to join here as a presenter. So the problem with the NREN that I have found that nobody likes to talk. That is the problem. But they are saying that they need cooperation. So without talking, how cooperation can happen? So that is the problem. I thought I could get 10 to 12 panelists, 10 to 12 persons as panelists, but it is very difficult to find someone. So thank you very much for coming forward. I know you are a very busy person. I don't know whether it is a blessings from the part of COVID-19 that we are getting you here because you have nothing to do now. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I got too many meetings going on no, no, now I'm just uh, kidding. because I'm just of COVID-19. Everyone is uh, doing video conferencing. I have no intention to demean you, to de humiliate you, okay? It's our pleasure to get you. Please continue. Okay, um, um, I'm going to talk about challenges uh, of NRANs during COVID-19, a slightly different way, uh, partly because uh, Singaran is, um, is a NRAN as well as a uh, open exchange point. So I'm going to start with universities, what's happening at the universities, and then what's happening at NREN local, and then after that, what's happening on, on the exchange point globally. So as I said, uh, Singaran um, runs a network. Um, it has uh, the internal uh, supporting the local universities and polytechnics and as well as research center, national center. Um, <clears throat> On top of that, uh, Singaran operates an open exchange point, which interconnects uh, many of our friends and partners. As well as, uh, as you look on the right-hand side here, we connect to Google, Amazon, Microsoft, as well as uh, StarHub, which is an ISP. Um, so that is uh, the layout, uh, high-level layout of Singaran. Now, I'm going to start with the universities first. Huh? But... Um, Let's look at the impact of COVID-19. Globally, almost all countries is having a lockdown. 
Singapore has a lockdown since uh, 7th of April. Universities and research centers, uh, institutes are like a ghost town. I am not allowed to go back into the university. I wanted to set up, a, you know, one of my server went down and I wanted to get into the universities to get that up again. They said, no, <laughs> you can't go in. Uh, so, but they gave me a, uh, an alternative. So there are people who are uh, so-called assigned and uh, allowed to go into universities, but there are very, very few and only on essential services only. Uh, they are basically the IT people. People start working from home. So like me, I have to work from home and we stay at home and keep ourselves occupied. We do our research at home. Students do online learning uh, since the 7th of April. Everyone is on lockdown, so students have to do online learning. But in actual fact, uh, the universities on the 2nd of February, oh, sorry, on the 12th of February, um, has already given an order to, not an order, uh, instructions to the faculties and everything to try and move things online. So internet has become a need, not a want. And when I say internet now, I'm referring to internet one, the commercial internet. Okay. Um, so one of the universities met, provided me with some information uh, on the e-learning system. Um, that goes back to January 2019. And you look at it, there seemed to be no difference at all in the, the number of lock-ins that we have in the universities. And the reason for that is because of SARS. Remember SARS some time back um, when it hit Singapore, uh, we were badly hit and we didn't quite have the system in, in place. And so since then we have all the e-learning systems, the LAMS, uh, things all up and running. And every semester, we have one week of e-learning week where there's no, uh, no classes running except online. So, so that's why you see the, the line here, the prediction line, it, it's about right. Except for April, then there's a big drop, uh, partly because um, we had all our assessment going uh, online, a large majority of them, and a lot of them are on continuous assessment. Uh, so uh, we weren't that badly hit, but uh, that's not showing the full picture. If you look at this picture, this is the number of files that has been going up online. And you look at the, the numbers, you know, uh, in 2020, from February onwards, you look, it start jumping up higher and higher and higher. What's happened here is that the uh, Faculties are loading more uh, videos on, uh, on the on LAM systems. So we are making our uh, recordings and, and putting online, uh, making assessments going online with it. So that's why it, you can see that there's a big jump over in uh, February, March um, period. And well, it comes down again in, in April because that was a rush. Um, there's no ex no um, physical face-to-face -face exams. Everything is online. In actual fact, one of the biggest problems we had was how do you access the students since it's going online? How do you know that um, the person is not cheating? Uh, there are some tools for it. It's not 100% proof. proof. Uh, it needs the video to be there um, and uh, basically capturing video and if there's a suspicion of someone looking too far to the right or too far to the left, we would say that, hmm, then we'll look at the video a little bit closer on that uh, and access it. Um, some of the assessment has just gone completely online, but going online for assessment is, we have to verify that that is the student and ensure that the assessment is true and correct. So that is still major for us. Uh, this, uh, this was the first time and I'm in a group of chat people, faculties who are in the chat group. We were discussing about it and currently there's no 100% way of doing it. Uh, but we are uh, getting uh, tools to help us uh, in assessment. The university traffic, um, 
the university goes through com- um, has its own commercial traffic as well. It's really huge. Like my university, we part we buy four gigabits of uh, of commercial internet traffic. But there's also traffic going through uh, my end, the end rand itself, and as you can see that the traffic is going over there, you know. And on the circuit breaker, which is basically a lockdown, you see traffic has uh, dropped tremendously because no one is allowed back on campus. Uh, but you you still see traffic there because we have foreign students in Singapore in the university, so. Um, they have. They are still staying on dormitories, so that's that's where the access is. So so that's why you see uh, some access to the uh, from the universities. Now, from Enrich's perspective, let's look at it. Edurome, look at what, what's happening to Edurome access from January until April. It just keep on dropping and dropping and dropping, because no one's on campus. You think about it by April. By 7th of April or 8th of April, um, the entire campus is on lockdown. No one is allowed back on campus. So that's not surprising at all. Um, our Google traffic, um, so this is only partial group Google traffic. Um, you can see that it, it's dropped down a little bit, uh, you know, since the lockdown. Our oh, Amazon traffic, you look at it, um, it's gone up. That shows that people are using AWS and all those to do their research. Um, so research is ongoing, and actually, fact, if anything else, it's, it's going up. And uh, it, it is really amazing. Um, and if I look at my internet access, this is, we bought about 100 meg for internet access just for internal use, I mean, or web and all those things. But that has gone up tremendously because the National Supercomputing Center is connected to Singaran directly. And previously, people access it in the universities via uh, um, Infinite Band, which is another not true uh, IP, so another uh, channel. Now, since the universities are all locked down, people cannot get back onto, onto campus. Um, so what has happened is people are coming in through basically our internet access. And it's, it's hitting quite 50 odd Mac, you know? So they are logging in through, through our single end internet access into the National Supercomputer Center. So let me put it this, it is important. We must be connected to the commercial internet. Um, because this, if anything else, this COVID-19 has shown that people working from home need access and they will come in from the commercial internet. So the, sing- the, the entrants must connect to the commercial internet, must connect to the commercial service providers who can provide services to our members. AWS is providing actually uh, the <clears throat> black box service. We shifted our entire e-learning uh, system onto the cloud, to AWS. So we must provide that. Um, I can't name who this partner is, but uh, I, I look at uh, my partner network's traffic coming into me. There's actually not much changes. So that, to me, tell, tells me that um, research is ongoing. Traffic is there, okay? Huh? But I, I guess for it, it really depends on, on different countries and, and different partners that interconnect huh? uh, the amount of impact COVID-19 has on the research. But research is still there. And I, I guess Tian is also impacted a little bit. The traffic may drop quite, quite, quite a bit. And actually, I, I forgot just now to tell you that the National Supercomputer Center, um, their CPU utilizations is at 95% on average. They don't see any difference at all. People are still running and if anything else more, because they have projects on COVID-19 and people need to run their, their tests on, on the supercomputer. The new normal we always talk about. Virtual meetings will be prevalent. E-learning, distance learning, 
AIDS is there. For, for Singapore, we learned from the SARS and we had the system in place. But even then, I have to admit, we were really taken aback uh, by this COVID-19. I mean, doing one week of e-learning and doing one month, uh, you know, and doing the assessment itself uh, during this period uh, online, it is a totally different matter all in all. That's why you can see we were loading up the e-learning system with so much new data uh, in this process. Remote access to research resources, it is important. Uh, it, uh, we need to provide that. Okay? Um, less people on campus. I think we'll see less people on campus uh, at, this, at one time. Uh, so I'm not sure how things are going to work out uh, and how long this COVID-19 is going to be. But whatever it is, things has changed and will not be back to the same old ways. Uh, lessons learned. Research continues even in the pandemic. How do we facilitate that? Connect to commercial internet. I have been fighting this for a long, long time in Tian. Uh, you know, that we have to provide uh, access to commercial internet. Connect to national resources, national facilities, like for Singaran, we, we connect supercomputing centers, you know, so that we can facilitate them. Can we negotiate a commercial service linked to NRAN, example, Zoom, Blackboard? Can Tian Sa CC negotiate on our behalf for the whole community? I, I, I think uh, that will be important. Singaran does not provide Zoom or uh, Microsoft Team, you know, or Blackboard uh, Collaborate because the universities in, in Singapore have their own. They have already got their own licenses and everything. But I hear what, what you all said. People are at different levels. So let's, can, can we come together and can we get Zoom to agree to a, a general agreement uh, for all the NRANs, okay? It may not impact Sing Singaran or, or Singapore, but it, I think it will be very, very useful and helpful uh, uh, for the less uh, developed NRANs. How do we provide secure and easy access? Huh? Um, so it's setting something up is nice, but you need to provide secure and easy access for people so that they can use us. And last but not least, how do we secure our network? This is very, very important. We must not forget that we just want to connect, we want to get things easy, get it out there. Um, cybersecurity is important. I think I, I see if it's mentioned that it's, it's not only an end users, but us on the NRAN side. Uh, if, it's, if, it's to be, uh, if the NRAN is to be a national infrastructure, we must help to secure it. I hope I haven't taken up too much time. <laughs> Thank you and stay safe. Let me. Um, any any question? Oh, I I think I should okay. be asking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Francis. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Dorit has uh, many, again power interruption. He will uh, join soon. And uh, thanks you uh, very much uh, for your nice presentation. And uh, uh, the questions, uh, we will have a, a question answering session after the uh, all panelists have, that they have their presentation. So we have our last pre last presenter, uh, Mr. Chalanpul. Uh, hi, are you listening? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I will share my presentation. Yeah, Hello. please. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, yes. Okay. So, um, 
so I'm the last speaker. <laughs> um, uh, I would start. I think uh, the topics given uh, to us and also uh, many speakers previously mentioned are quite similar. So uh, I will take a little bit uh, <clears throat> to give the introduction about the situations of the COVID from the start point and then uh, talk about the Thailand's uh, situation. So we all know that uh, in December, uh, there's uh, some cases uh, happened in China, in Wuhan. And then at that time, uh, nobody know exactly what is uh, the uh, uh, type of uh, virus and also the real situation until the, on 30th of December, the Wuhan uh, Municipal Health Commission informed the city com communities about the uh, pneumonia outbreak. And then in January, we see that more and more uh, cases coming out. And also we found the cases outside China. And uh, in the next slide, we show that uh, many countries uh, found the first case, including Thailand. So in January 2020, uh, China uh, confirmed that the co coronavirus uh, can be transmitted between humans on uh, 20th of January. So that uh, is uh, the first time that uh, many people are aware that, okay, now uh, we cannot uh, think that it's not transmittable uh, between uh, humans. So this is confirmed on 20th of January. Then uh, the government of uh, China announced the quarantines uh, in the cities. And then uh, we can see that uh, in January, Thailand actually uh, found the first case among many countries on January 13th. So uh, at that time, uh, besides uh, China, then Thailand is the first country have been reported officially to see uh, to have the first case of the COVID-19, and later uh, many country uh, follows, <laughs> and uh, this is uh, what happens during the beginnings of the outbreak in January, and you can also see the the list of the country that first uh, found the uh, cases in the Wikipedia. And uh, regarding to the trends, you can see that uh, right now uh, the cases in China is dropping, but the trends of the COVID-19 in the rest of the world are increasing. And uh, also, uh, I would like to talk about uh, the reactions and measures in Thailand. Uh, since uh, uh, in the beginnings of January, uh, when we received the news from China that uh, there's outbreaks of the COVID-19, uh, the government of Thailand orders to have the screenings uh, for all the passengers from China, uh, from actually from Wuhan in the beginning at the airports, and later on uh, to scan for all the travelers from China in uh, on the 28th of Japan uh, of January, and then uh, in February uh, 26, the government uh, advised the travelers to postpone trips to the high risk countries, and on 4th of March, the travelers arriving from high risk countries will be self quarantined and register their address, and. On 17 of March, the cabinet approved the plan to close all the schools and universities. And this will be related to what I'm going to uh, discuss more in details. And then also we propose uh, some holidays during uh, April. And also uh, after that, uh, 22nd of March, all department stores and markets in Bangkok are closed. At that time, people are moving out of Bangkok. And then uh, on 2nd of April, the government announced national, nationwide curfews between uh, 10 p.m. 
uh, in the, at night until 4 a.m. in the mornings, starting from the epithelium, in order to contain the spread of the corona, uh, coronavirus. And then uh, starting from April of uh, 6, uh, the government banned on the incoming passengers for all flights. So, uh, then now uh, we can see the challenge happens. First of all, uh, I think the question is how to contain the spread of coronavirus. So basically, I think so many countries are doing the same things. First, uh, we are trying to encourage the social distancing. And then uh, we try to protect ourselves by having a personal protective equipment. Then uh, some cities were locked down. And also uh, there are some uh, tracking system, for example, mobile applications uh, for PUIs or visitors. The people who are uh, under the investigation will be tracked by the mobile apps and also the visitors who come to the different uh, uh, countries to the cities also have to be tracked. Then uh, to fight for the virus, we can see that there are different issues starting from the policy issue even from the government, there's uh, discussing about whether we should lock down or not to lock down the cities. And after the, the lockdowns of city, we can actually see the trends of the uh, cases starting to uh, decrease. And also, uh, they have to concern about the economic issues also, as well as uh, the social issues. Then, uh, in terms of uh, the fighting for the wireless, I think uh, it will be last for, I don't know how long, but at least uh, so months until we can get uh, drugs or vaccine. So this is the challenges for many countries, globally, it's not only uh, Thailand. And also the new normals happens as we can see from the pictures. Now, uh, about the challenges and initiatives by the NRANs, uh, after the school and university have been closed to avoid the spread of the COVID, uh, the situation has not been prepared in advance. Actually, the government uh, approved the plan to shut down or to close the school and university. Uh, after, after the approvals, uh, then two days after that, all the school and the university have been closed. So there's no time for the preparations. However, uh, ongoing classes in the university still are not finished yet for the semester. Luckily, it's, uh, for the school, like for example, the primary school, secondary school, and high schools, they just finished their uh, final exams and also uh, finish the semester for the uh, schools, but uh, for the universities, uh, there's still classes ongoing. So, uh, each university and institutions had to uh, make their own decisions uh, to prepare uh, how to uh, continue the classes. Uh, actually, it's, um, there are so many available platforms and tools, for example, Zoom, uh, Cisco WebEx, Microsoft Teams, and others. However, uh, the instructor and students in the UC were not trained to use those kind of tools before. So that's uh, obstructions for the beginnings to uh, have the online courses or uh, to have the online educations. Then, um, again, uh, each university have to make their own decision on what kind of tools that they are using. And uh, luckily it's, uh, for Thailand that uh, we joined uh, the projects under the Asia Connects, which is actually uh, led by uh, Bangladesh uh, BD Rens. So we received uh, the Zoom license for 1000 license for this uh, to support the, uh, the 
online education. Uh, in the beginnings, uh, before the COVID-19, I tried to promote the usage of the Zooms. However, only uh, a few hundred, like uh, less than 200, 300 people apply for the accounts. But once the university has been closed, the demands or the requests coming. So now I don't have enough license to support them. Um, the way that uh, we manage, in the beginning, we try to uh, open up uh, for uh, any request or uh, any applicants uh, who would like to use Zoom. But then uh, we found that uh, if we use it uh, and open for anyone in this way, then we don't have enough uh, license to support. So we try to manage it in the central uh, centralized ways. So basically, uh, we create a central accounts, and then we have a team to set up the meeting room or the uh, uh, the account for the instructors who would like to have the class during that time. So uh, by pulling uh, the resource this way, we can support uh, some university uh, who don't have their own uh, conference tools or uh, platforms. So uh, the tools and the platform that we use basically uh, from the NREN is based on Zoom for the distance online uh, education, for online meetings, video conferencing, and the webinars. Uh, Again, uh, we also have uh, some information. Uh, actually, it's, uh, for our entrance, uh, we have an online platform previously uh, uh, developed for all the university, but this is uh, uh, not the real, uh, not supporting the, the interactive uh, learning. So we need uh, the video conference to, to support that. Uh, I would like to show uh, some of the statistics about the Zoom uses uh, before and after the COVID-19 uh, outbreak. You can see that uh, in January and February, the uses is quite low. And then uh, in March, we start to giving out the accounts for the license to the university and also uh, to the uh, instructors now you can see that the, the uses increase. Uh, I don't think uh, maybe uh, triples <laughs> uh, starting from March to uh, May. So uh, in terms of the number of participants and the number of meetings, uh, I show the graphs uh, from the Zoom's dashboard uh, in the last one, uh, last 30 days or one month. You can see that uh, the usage is quite high. So this is uh, the results or the impacts of the COVID-19 that happens. So basically, uh, for the events, uh, we try to support and provide the tools for the university who don't have the platforms and then support them. Uh, regarding to the network itself, actually, it's, uh, after the university had been closed, the students uh, stay at home and then uh, they learn uh, from uh, using the internet from their homes. And uh, uh, luckily uh, in the first month, um, the government actually supports uh, the internet uses to every household by giving uh, the uh, 100 megabit per second uh, to every household's uh, internet uses and also provides uh, 10 gigabytes of the traffic or the uses to all the mobile users. So uh, this can help uh, the students and the instructors for using the internet to uh, support their uh, online educations. So I think uh, this is uh, the uh, presentation that I would like to mention from the Thailand site. So uh, any questions?
Okay, thanks, Mr. Charampal, for your presentation, which is very much informative and which is obviously brief. And I thank you for maintaining time. Nobody else other than you probably could maintain time. So you have maintained perfectly 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Nice to see you yeah. after such a long time. So can you share one thing? How many licenses? You have 1,000 licenses. How many? Yeah, now, we and use all, all the uh, 1,000 license now. All 1,000 has been used. Yeah. Right? So that is another issue. Okay, I will discuss it later. That how we can upgrade it. Because we are locked with Nordunet. So uh -huh. how we, are, we can upgrade it. So uh, Francis has given a good proposal that I didn't think about that. The 10 star CC can come forward with something like Zoom licensing and they can purchase it in a bulk and they can share it with the membering countries who inclines to take this licensing facility. I think many will come forward. Yeah, actually um, I sent email to Nadunet in the early uh, March. I know that I forecast that uh, 1,000 license is not enough. So I sent an email to Did them. Did you get any reply? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> actually he said that, okay, I'm sorry. We are so stuck in the same issues because they have to serve five countries in the Northern Net. Okay. So they don't have enough license to increase for us at that time. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm saying that uh, why yeah. can't, uh, 10 star CC X like Nordunet for the whole community. No, no, I, I know. Uh, no, that is another option. So, uh, Charampol is saying that he contacted Nordunet directly to get to increase the number of licenses. Yeah, I, I think that, that will be difficult. <laughs> that will be difficult. Yeah. Why that will be difficult? Because uh, from your presentation, what we could identify or what we could figure out is that the pressure for the developed countries like Singapore, Denmark, Sweden, it is not that high for online learning or online education because it was there before. So it is there right now also. Maybe there is 10 to 20% increase, but not- No, 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 no. Tori, what I'm saying is that it's difficult for Nordunet to extend their license out uh, to us. They are managing their five countries. Uh, I'm saying that uh, what I'm uh, suggesting, not saying, I'm suggesting is if Tiansan CC can negotiate a deal about tender deal with Zoom, okay, uh, or, or any other uh, good uh, video conference provider about tender, then the, the community as a whole, Tiansan CC, would benefit from it, okay? I mean, some countries don't need to take it up. Agreed. I mean, you know, but those who need it take up the appropriate numbers. Yeah. Um, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, you know, we, we, we've been talking to the Zoom, um, in, you know, the, the ones that cover our region, um, so we, we can help facilitate those conversations, at least get those conversations going. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention is that, uh, the, you know, the Nord Unet, Nord Unet has been working with Zoom for the past five years. So the, so the sort of pricing terms that they have um, Zoom is very unlikely going to give that to anybody because um, they've, they've, they've been a huge partner. And this is the understanding that, um, that, that I have speaking with Nord Unit and Zoom. Uh, but we should definitely look into you know, how we can uh, have a centralized commercial agreement. Uh, I think that makes uh, perfect sense, Francis. But I have actually raised this issue about the Zoom thing to the GNA policy and strategy uh, where Arnet and... Uh, Nordunet people are involved in the discussion as well. Um, so it, it, it's, it's trying to get Zoom to so-called understand the, the need because uh, um, Arnet is also another provider of the Zoom. But the Zoom has grown so big and sometimes talking to them is a little bit difficult. <laughs> so, so we are, we are actually uh, probing um, Ulf from Nordunet to help see who is the right person to contact in Zoom for such a negotiation. Now, I'm 
hoping, or I, I would like to suggest that maybe Chen Sao CC um, should be uh, so-called helping, uh, so not, not helping, uh, should maybe be the, be the organization to help us negotiate for the community as a whole. But I think at the lower down negotiation, there, there will be certain people that will need to do that. But at a high level, at least Chen Sao CC back it. And, and maybe when, when the tender needs to come, called by Ken Star CC. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, I think Yunjin is there, right? Yeah. Yunjin, yeah, thank you for answering. Could you please say something? Yeah, actually. Ball is in your court. Yeah, since uh, the outbreak of COVID 19, we it, also. It, it's, it's quite soft, uh, Eugene. Yeah. You're yeah. quite soft. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Is that okay? Yeah. We, we can okay. hear you. But yeah, Francis since, cannot. Yeah, since uh, the COVID-19 outbreak, we also uh, discussed about this matter, how we support our partners. Uh, they also the Zoom license uh, the, is one of these uh, items. Uh, we can support the de uh, developing countries in our community. So I will take a note and then the put it our uh, the list of impact of uh, COVID-19 and then the uh, yeah the but you know the, we also have to discuss some the internally but it is definitely one of the list uh, how we can support our community. Okay that's yeah, good. I, I mean um, you could actually form a, a group yeah. um, to look into this. I, I think uh, uh, Torrid has been uh, very, very involved in it, uh, Roshan, you know, yeah. uh, Charapons. So, so that, that there's a group to help you along because they have done some things on, on it and they have uh, worked with Nordunet. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I'm happy um, to, to join. Uh, I'm trying to work through the global network architecture group and pushing them to see who is the right person to, to contact. So, so we, if we all push together, then right. there's a higher chance that we yeah. can negotiate uh, on a better terms. We can always find out the pricing terms for Nordunet. <laughs> so that acts as a base. Yeah. Yeah, we are thankful to Nordunet because they have come forward and they have allured us and they have created some clients for Zoom. That is for sure. And they have given us the opportunity to use this service free of cost for more than two years. And they have extended on their own. So that's a great opportunity. We are thankful to Nordunet, but even if there is any circle, we have to go out of it. So we cannot uh, stay stuck, okay? So we have to plan ahead of time. So I'm ready to help you if I can. So 10 Star CC can form a group or form a committee as Francis has suggested. So that will be nice. I, I think the, the main thing is that we have to be able to sustain ourselves. We, uh, we, we, we have to, yes, Northern Net helped us a lot to move, but now it's, it's a time for us. And we saw from, the, from what you have presented, the impact that you all have made uh, to the national, and now you have become quite visible nationally uh, too. So I think um, we should try and use this opportunity to sustain uh, 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 research infrastructure, a national research, research infrastructure. Definitely. So let me open the floor to the audience. I have some questions. I will discuss that. But before that, I would like to hear from someone in Bhutan. There is some representative from Bhutan who wants to speak anything because he is one of the partnering countries. If not, then I will go ahead with the questions I have received so far. Some of them have already been answered. The data protection policy that was from Lan to Asif, he has already answered it, that he will share it. The VPN stuff, okay, that was a suggestion that Asif can use, try to use Edu VPN. And Office 365 Cloud, what's the benefits of using A3? 
are in the process of joining A1 and would like to know your experience. Asif, have you already answered it to Roshan? Yeah, I, I already uh, provided the reply, but I, but I think basically it's really around um, the uh, A3 version lets you do desktop installations of the Office products. And um, in uh, countries such as Pakistan where connectivity is, uh, is an issue, um, so we, we, we found that to be very useful, for, especially for offline access. Uh, I, I personally prefer the feel of the desktop application versus the web application, but that's a personal preference. Um, so, so, just to follow up, just to follow up, uh, do you mind like sharing what you are paying for this sort of thing? How many licenses you have? Um, officially, yeah. I can answer okay. that question, but uh, um, unofficially, you can give me a call later. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> how many licenses you have? Uh, subscribe. Uh, so we have, um, so the, the way it works for us, and this is a public number so I can share it, yeah. is we have about, I think, 80,000 faculty licenses. So we've purchased faculty and staff licenses. Uh -huh. And then all students are free. So that, that's, that's the licensing agreement that we have. Um, so, so all faculty members have it, um, but, but all students get the same sort of access for free. Uh, which, which, which for us is, you know, if just in higher education alone, uh, we're at 1.5 million students. Not, not, not everyone is using it, but, uh, you know, we're um, slowly, I, 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 I should actually get those graphs and share it with you, that, that our Microsoft numbers and usage numbers have really gone up significantly um, in, in, in the past six weeks, primarily because of the fact that Universities are paying for it, and they didn't even know that they had access, or they, they never bothered finding out um, you know, how, how they would go about uh, getting their students set up. So faculty was usually using it, but it was more on the students' end, where the service wasn't really being accepted. Thank you. Hi, uh, Asif. Um, yeah, actually, in NTU, we also have a, the site license and, and everything. So we, we have both uh, Zoom as, uh, as well as Microsoft uh, Team. Um, both are equally okay to, to use. Um, there's also another one called Blackboard Collaborate, uh, which, which we use as well. So, so we, we give that options to faculties to choose whichever they feel most comfortable with. But it, it works pretty well. Yeah, so the issue with Teams is that, I think Teams was designed to be more of a collaboration or collaborative environment, right, a collaboration tool wasn't really designed for video conferencing. I, I think that's some of the issues that we're seeing, that it's, it's so tight. The, the good thing about Teams, it's very tightly integrated with the rest of the Microsoft suite, but that's also the bad thing about it. And if you want to use it standalone, you know, it, it uh, comes with a lot of extra baggage um, uh, that, that they haven't quite figured out. Eventually, I think they'll get there. Um, but, but the feedback that we've got so far, and my experience has also been, is that, um, you know, Zoom has been... Um, a, a, a lot easier for faculty to use. It's, it's better suited for video conferencing. I, I, I've used WebEx in the, in the past, it's very similar. Uh, Blackboard Collaborate, uh, we haven't really used around here, but the initial pricing terms that we got from them, you know, didn't really make, uh, you know, make it sound to be very interesting or appealing. Because right now, and, and the conversation that we're having with Zoom is, is you are competing against Teams and, and, and not only are you competing against teams, you're competing against teams that is practically being given to universities for free because they're already paying for it in some form or the yeah. other, right? So, um, you know, that, that, that's, that's the leverage that we have with Zoom saying, look, we'd love to give your product out there, uh, but I know if, uh, if, if you're going to charge us the same amount that you're charging uh, your, your sort of published prices, you know, no one's going to pay uh, $10 or $15 a month um, for, um, for, for access. Um, if they do end up doing that, uh, you know, what's going to happen is that people will just get smarter about how they use their licenses. So something that, that, that for example, that the part's talking about is, is having a front end where people can schedule their conferences. Um, you know, people are always going to be resorting to, 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 to some other ways of getting the pricing down there, um, you know, but below a certain threshold. So, 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 we're, so we're going to them and, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to have an answer from them this week. We've been talking to them for about a month um, uh, in terms of negotiating a central license. Uh, and as soon as we have more information, I uh, would be happy to share that with everyone else. Um, but, but, but also, I think 
And what, what's really important here is that we, we have, you know, we, we, we have a very good contact at Zoom uh, in the region. Um, so if there's any further conversations that need to happen at the end end level, uh, we can help facilitate those as well. Thanks, Asif. Very good. Okay, then I have a question to answer from Mr. Akam Habibur Rahman, the ex CEO. That, Torit, have you estimated how much incentives will be required for students, teachers, for data users? Okay, so for 1250 classes per student requirement of, with all the attendance, the requirement I have to calculate actually. Okay, I will calculate and will let you know. I can calculate using Excel sheet, so not in English. And then a question to Asif. Talim data bundle is on board. How it is managed by the telco if bought and used for other purposes? Right, so uh, very, very good question. So, so we, we're going with the whitelisting approach where we, we've told the telcos, we haven't launched this yet. We will be providing the telcos with whitelisting. Um, that's that, that's prim primarily how we're going to control it. Um, you know, the uh, name, as it suggests, it's the ed education bundle. So once it's a whitelisted bundle that only gives you access to um, predetermined uh, um, IP addresses, websites. Um, and and we're, we're also talking about um, actually opening up Zoom as uh, as a part of this bundle. Um, we, we are talking about opening up um, uh, access to Coursera, to edX, uh, the Khan Academy, so all the internet, global um, internet websites out there that um, th that have this sort of content available. So, so the way we're looking at it, it's a very restricted uh, bundle um, apart from the Zoom access, because I think anyone could end up using it for Zoom. So, but, but primarily we think that um, as, as far as, as you know, misuse is concerned, if, if someone buys it, the worst thing that they can do is um, really um, uh, learn, right? Which, 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 is, which is a good outcome anyway. Um, it, it is also going to be time bound. It's most of the packages um, coming from um, the mobile operators are all based off of time as well. So it's 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. You know, as, as someone had mentioned earlier, there's uh, uh, the, you know, the, the last mile bandwidth uh, spectrum sort of issues um, are what the um, uh, mobile operators are facing and, and, and they want to make sure that, you know, they're paying or higher paying customers, uh, their quality of service is not, uh, not impacted. So this is a, a time bound um, deal as well. It's from, eight, for example, for the most part. Okay, about the question Habib asked me. So it is around, I have made a rough calculation now. So it is around 9,37,500 BDT per day actually. So the number of classes, considering number of present or the current number of classes of 1,250. So with the data package they are providing, the mobile operators, it is around 10 lakh BDT. With increase in number of classes, it will automatically get increased. It's per day. It is per day. 1250 classes per day. Okay, thank you. And how it will be implemented? Actually, yeah, I, I, have, I have got I have got the answer from Asif. Okay. Uh, uh, it will be tagged with some uh, IP addresses. That uh, particular packages will only be. On, only will have the access to that particular IP addresses. So that can be uh, in yes, that way. Only those IP addresses will be free of charge. And yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. the mobile operators, they don't prefer the domain name or foreign IP address because foreign IP address is used for many, may be used by many different people for many different purposes. So that's why it is better to have on premises Zoom platform. So thanks to Roshan again. He has motivated us and we have already made it. Okay, thank you. So it can be done by the mobile operators. And another question to ask if can you mention some findings on online data collection 
to guess online readiness that's it the uh, so we so so we've done a there, there, there's there's been a bunch of surveys done on this um, over the past six weeks, um, and you know the issue with surveys is that there's always a, some sort of bias right in terms of a selection bias you know a lot of these are online surveys so you're you're, you're sort of uh, only only getting responses from uh, people who who have connectivity. Um, so what what we do want to do eventually is a proper survey you know using you know proper sampling techniques. That said, um, you know, one of the things that we've seen is that um, there, there, there was one survey that had about 100,000 respondents. Um, according to that, 50% uh, of um, students had issues with um, connectivity. Now, um, which, which is a bit odd, as, uh, as, as Thorat had mentioned earlier as well, this was an online survey, and you had so many respondents. And, you know, they, and the fifty percent of them were, were claiming that they don't have access um, to uh, to the internet. Um, so, so right now, in terms of the data that we've got, uh, you know, it's it's as low as fifty percent, or as high as fifty percent, students don't have internet access to about seven or eight percent. Um, I think, um, and they're, they're depending on this other survey that did what we we done earlier. So I would I would guess it's more for us it's about in the fifteen is uh, what 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 we're looking at and and again in, in Pakistan's context you have one point five two million students if you get it, if you get it wrong by ten percent that's you know almost two hundred thousand kids so um, so so we're 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 very uh, sensitive uh, about this issue we're doing our best um, to get a lot of this data um, where we we will be launching a, a, another sort of formal survey students, um, which will also help us determine the needs um, for the Talim bundle um, and uh, some of the other in interventions that we're looking at um, across the board. As, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a World Bank project that we're working on. Um, so so, we're, so we're, we're trying to collect a lot more data so that we can uh, make more informed uh, decisions and, uh, and, and utilize any funding that, that, that potentially coming um, in a, in in a way where we're, where we're confident it's going to have the most impact. Okay, so one question for Francis from Asif. Can others also access Google AWS via Singaren? Could you please answer? Um, no issue at all. Uh, but uh, the, the thing is, uh, it needs agreement from AWS uh, because they they would in our connection to them they will limit um, the ASs that they will uh, permit to to get in there. So so we, we have no no issue on that. If uh, if um, AWS says that's fine, we are happy to peer peer you to to them or even Google Google or whatever it is. But it's it's a resource, and I see it's it's there, and there's some a lot more bandwidth than than what we can consume anyway. So uh, I think AWS is going to link to us by 100 gig uh, within the next month or so. They have actually uh, requested for it. Uh, it's just that now we're on the lockdown; we cannot do the upgrade. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Great. I, I think that 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 would be very useful because um because of a lot of our. You know, we 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 have the the TN connection uh, to Singapore, um, mm -hmm. um, via, via Singapore, and I think you know we're we're also upgrading that. You know, we're not talking about hundred uh, gigabits at, at this point, but we're I, I think that's going up from like one gig to two and a half gig, or, or maybe even higher. So so we're, so we we have that pipe. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's as far as the the latency on that is concerned, it's going to be lower than anything else that we're going to get. I think it will really benefit the researchers, um, to, you know, um, especially these days on you know big data and machine learning, um, to start utilizing some of that and also help get some of our um, uh, traffic up. So, so we're starting to utilize uh, more of it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, Mr. Asif, could you please answer one of my queries because you have dealt with a lot of LMSs for helping the universities in Pakistan. So 
there are three options so far i could understand one is to go for open source like moodle one is we can go with some licensed version like blackboard or d2l and the last option is we can develop it on our own so what are the pros and cons so um look uh, you know country um, um bangladesh pakistan we've got um uh you know s- s- similar uh, situation where you know our our universities don't have the money right so if you look for a licensed solution these things end up costing quite a bit of money right and and i think that when you lock, talk about long term sustainability uh it gets hard to um for, for universities to sustain it so even if we were to get them up and running on it i i think the challenge always is is that you know how, how do we sustain it especially the larger universities you know because it, it, some of the pricing is always user based if you've got 10,000 15,000 students versus 1,000 students i i, I think it's uh, it changes the numbers so our so our recommendation has really been uh open source i i, I wouldn't recommend you build your own because it will take you years to catch up to what's already out there in the market um and in terms of open source there's moodle um there's a guy um there's canvas open source available as well though i'm not sure what the difference between the open source version and the paid version is um but you know we we really got a um sorry i'm getting a couple of calls um let me exit my teams app <laughs> give me one second guys oh, sorry. sorry um so uh, yeah so so what i was saying is that um we have a uh, uh so 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 my, my recommendation would would be open source i um uh, uh, but but the, but again you need to build up your capacity you need to build up your own uh, internal capacity to support it uh we've we reached out to um you know our our moodle partners you know it it gets it, it gets expensive very very quickly when you go for commercial support so you know my my recommendation is to you know build out your own um support internally um you know there there's there's also other open source platforms that that we're evaluating as well and in, in te- on top of moodle is the open edx platform um which which i think from a moocs perspective so if you're looking to roll out moocs Uh, or sort of a nationwide MOOCs platform I, w- I would recommend um looking at the open edx platform that's what edx is using harvard mit um you know they they all end up using that same platform as well um so there's no difference between the paid version and the, there is no paid version for open edx um and uh it, you know so uh so so we're looking at it from that perspective um that you know what what's cheaper to maintain um the other thing is where um i see our services as enrens um you know is um offering the infrastructure of the cloud um universities don't have data centers or you don't want them to be building their own data centers um you know you're always going to need a lot more bandwidth um uh when you're when you're talking about an lms platform or a moocs platform so 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 the focus would be irrespective of whatever you pick i would recommend that the enrens host it themselves um and and we would need to of course develop the expertise in order to do so um because because that that lev- that we, that's where we're leveraging on the investments that 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 we've made to date which is exactly what we're trying to do um here in pern so if we take model suppose you in your presentation if i am not wrong wrong so i could see that uh, you have installed one version of model at your data center right and you are yes. providing the services to the universities yeah so what, what what we've done is you know moodle doesn't really work out of the box the open source version doesn't do multi tenancy um so we i i i can i can get get, in, get into those um details um and uh really um you know what we've done is we've installed a we 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 have a script that creates moodle installations very very quickly um using the same sort of because it's at the end of the day moodle is is just a web application right so um so there's p there there's a php it's a php application um and it works like any other php application so so we we figured out how to um copy the installations very very quickly based off of a base installation okay and then give it to universities to um so so that they can administer it on their own so so far my knowledge goes uh each university has its own specific requirement right so who yes. is taking the responsibility to configure as per their requirement the university itself or part the university itself 
right? So, so, so what, what we want to do is at the end of the day, we, we you know, we're not going to be in the, in the business of um, supporting the universities the way they would, the way they need to be supported. Um, they need to develop the, my, my view is they need to develop their own local, um, you know, gurus as far as the, the LMS is concerned so they can support it locally. However, infrastructure, hosting, bandwidth, you know, that, that's something that we know how to do. Uh, we, we can, we can provide that, right? So, you know, just, just getting a Moodle uh, instance up and running is actually pretty easy. But, but as soon as you start thinking about high availability, as soon as you start thinking about failover, as soon as you start, start thinking about load balancing, um, not, not, not every university will have the capability of figuring it, uh, figuring it out on their own. Um, security is, 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 is um, yet another example. So, so you know, my, my recommendation is we focus more on the infrastructure, the hosting environment, and give it as a hosted sort of platform um, for, uh, for universities to use, which is the approach that we're taking. Okay, thank you. So I don't think there is any question in my box. Jayat, is there any more question in the just box? To add, just to add to what Tafi was no, saying. No, I, I also can see any, any more questions. Okay, Roshan, please go ahead. I just wanted to uh, like say uh, what uh, like about this model. So model it doesn't support multi but there's a version of model someone has developed on top of it called Totera. It's called uh, I'll put the name here. Yeah, um, to to Totera isn't free. So they have an open source. Uh, so Totera is provided as a solution, but they have an open source thing in some GitHub or some place we found. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I, I would, I would, I would love to get more details because, because I think we they don't. Tried all this yes, okay, because, because, because I actually looked into that. Um, I, I, I actually looked, I looked into Totera. Um, I actually even liked their pricing model. I think the pricing model was great because um, it, it, it sort of scales up very quickly, and then you play a, a fat, a flat um, thirty-five thousand dollars a year, depending on you know you have a half a million users, which is, which isn't really bad. Um, but, 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 but I think um, since then. Uh, the uh, issue that I saw with, 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 with Totera was the fact that it is not open so source until you buy it. So once you buy it, they will give you source code. Um, you know, the, the, the old GitHub that you may have found uh, may, may, may not have been updated in years. So but we can talk about that offline. All right. Okay, thanks a lot. Dear audience, do you have any question? Otherwise, we have to wrap it up because people are getting restless. Probably, I have already made some delay to Asif's meeting. <laughs> Other participants are waiting. No, I'm happy to stay on and answer questions if, if needed. No, I can arrange another session for LMS then. And inviting you, Roshan, you are the experts on LMS because we have to plan LMS installation of LMS or procurement or development, whatever you call it in the right way. Otherwise we'll be in the middle of the ocean and there will be nothing to catch up. Keep on swimming, swimming, swimming with seeing no show at all. But uh, sometimes that's also fun. <laughs> Not for too long. <laughs> uh, that's that's exactly how I I felt over the last seven months. I'm just swimming, swimming, swimming. <laughs> no, you have to take challenge to get some solution. Asif is right. Yeah. Yes, you have to take some challenges, and once you do it, then you will say, "Oh, it it can be done. It's nothing." Yes. But jumping into the ocean, yes, you need some audacity to do it and also some stupidity. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Yunjin, do you want to say anything? Closing remarks from Stain Star CC? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, first of all, I appreciate to, to Tarit and the BDRAN team to organize this uh, webinar. And also appreciate it to the panel for to share its enhanced activities and national situations. I think these uh, COVID-19 responses are very worthy to share our community, and also will be the also opportunity for all of us to reconfirm our values and impact of our RNA network. 
So I really appreciate and then we have to still in the fighting of COVID-19 and then we will work more for supporting our society. So it was a very the good start and good initiative this webinar. And uh, the, I wish to meet you all again by this kind of uh, webinar or I more prefer the face-to-face -face meeting, but yeah, <laughs> I really wish it to- Yeah, in you. virtual meeting, no, no tea, no coffee, oh, no entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's missing, it's boring. Yeah. Okay, so I will make a proceedings and we'll share it with you, okay? Yeah. And probably you have got a lot of, lot of data yeah. because you sent me an email yeah. to report. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have already received a lot of data and all the presentation, I will tell the panelists to share it and it yeah. will be there in our website so you can download it at any time. And I will make a brief proceedings. Yeah, I will be share those uh, the data so that, uh, whenever I collect and then I will upload our website. And I also plan to share with the Giant because uh, the Europeans are also uh, working to uh, the overview of COVID-19 globally. So uh, the, I wish to the, uh, collaborate with the, uh, the Giant and the other community for, uh, to share uh, our current activities. Yeah, so I will the announce when we upload those uh, data in the website. Okay, I think it's not a problem for any of the panelists. There is no copyright. You can take and you can share, okay? Thank you. So thank you very much, all the audience, because of your active participation, we could arrange the seminar and thanks for your nice hearing. And we appreciate such participation also in future to make it efficient and effective. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. So, uh, I, I close the meeting. Close, call, please. को उनकी नीड्स को किस तरह से कोशिश कर रही है कि उनको वो सहूलियत मैसर हो जाए तो इस सारे जो सिचुएशन है एक तो हमने गाइडलाइंस बना दी लेकिन इसके साथ-साथ हमने फिर एक प्रोजेक्ट बनाया जिसमें हम जा रहे थे कि जो बच्चे फिजिकल उसकी जो लिमिटेशन है उसकी वजह से अगर यूनिवर्सिटी नहीं जा सकते क्लास से लाइब्रेरी नहीं जा सकते तो उसमें एक इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीलचेयर का प्रोग्राम हायर एजुकेशन कमीशन ने शुरू किया सिमिलर तरीके से डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन करेंगे अगले साल करेंगे तो आइंदा तीन चार सालों तक ये प्रोग्राम चलता रहेगा तो ये व्हील चेयर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन प्रोग्राम लाइव ब्रॉडकास्ट का किया जाएगा ई डी यू टी प्लेटफॉर्म पर तो मजीद तफसीत देखने के लिए आप ई डी यू टी वी प्लेटफॉर्म विजिट करें और वहाँ से तफसीत जाए जो टारगेट ऑडियंस है वो तमाम वो अफराज जिनको मूवमेंट की डिसबिलिटी है या लिमिटेशन है उनके लिए इलेक्ट्रिक व्हील चेयर है